There are the Pirates who dominated the National League East. And from Greenville, North Carolina, there are the East Carolina Pirates, hungry for national recognition, led by All-American linebacker Robert Jones. East Carolina coach Bill Lewis was a one-time pitcher in the Detroit Tiger organization. He's led his school to four straight wins and their best start since 1983. Quarterback Jeff Blake has thrown eight touchdown passes in the last two weeks, and he's thrown 110 in a row without an interception. Paul Pasqualoni saw his defense give up a record amount of yardage against Florida State. He's also seen the offense score only one touchdown in the last six quarters. He's hoping Marvin Graves can rebound from his poorest passing performance ever, and he's hoping for more offensive weapons to complement the missile, who has been nothing short of sensational. Super Sports, a production of Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse, presents Syracuse Football. Today on the campus of Syracuse University, it's the East Carolina Pirates, 4-1, meeting the 4-1 Syracuse Orangemen. And hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Cohen. Coming off the disappointing finish against number one Florida State, many fans checked the schedule, saw that Syracuse was coming home to the Dome and facing only East Carolina, and the collective wisdom was, well, this is the kind of game that's just what the doctor ordered. Well, if that's your diagnosis, you know, you might be wise to seek a second opinion. I know I will, and that's why I'm calling on Dr. Dale. <laughs> Dr. Dale says, Dave, that this is going to be a tough game. This is a well-disciplined football team. They have a plus-12 turnover ratio, which basically means their opponents make mistakes, they don't. They're averaging 37 points a game. This is the kind of game that Syracuse really doesn't really want to have to face. This is a tough game that's also motivated. They really want to get some national recognition. And they have this game as well as the Pittsburgh game in a couple of weeks. They lost earlier in the year to Illinois. Now, Syracuse may get a taste of their own medicine today because the offense that Jeff Blake runs is an option offense, and they like to throw the football all over the lot. Well, Blake is like a mini Major Harris, but they've got three receivers that are averaging over 20 yards a catch. So they do like to throw the football. They will run the football. Blake will run the football. So this is going to put a lot of a test on the Syracuse defense. And remember the name, Deion Johnson. He's the East Carolina equivalent of the missile. He actually has more all-purpose yards than Cadre does after five games. One thing Syracuse does have in their favor, excellent special teams play. In fact, the best since the Floyd Little era. Really, I couldn't remember them having so much success. If you want to look at this super fact right here, this year, in, in comparison, Syracuse had two touchdowns off of kickoffs, one punt return for a, a touchdown, total return yard, 674. Look at the opposition, only 231. So they're doing it on both sides of the ball, one block kick, Syracuse special teams, a big plus. Something Syracuse did differently this week. They did not practice on Friday, maybe to allow an extra day to heal up the bumps and bruises. All right, now let's go down to Dan Horde. And Dan, I've got a question regarding the atmosphere surrounding this game. Well, the atmosphere right now, quite honestly, Dave, is rather dead. It's kind of like the season opening game at the Dome against Vanderbilt, where there are only about 35,000 fans in attendance, and Syracuse got off to a very slow start in that game. In the second home game against Florida, the Dome was packed. There was an electric atmosphere, and Syracuse got off to a tremendous start, particularly on the 95-yard kick return by Kirby Dardar. They're only expecting about 36,000 today against East Carolina. We'll see if that has any, any effect on either Syracuse or the Pirates. We'll have the kickoff coming up in just a moment on Super Sports. Super Sports is brought to you by Coors Light. The silver bullet is the right beer now. And by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Back in the Carrier Dome for the third home game of the year as the teams will pass the midway point of the season, each coming in at 4-1. and one. East Carolina on the far side of the field has won the toss but deferred the option, so Syracuse will be able to get the football first to begin this game. Here is Syracuse's season to date, and as you check East Carolina, they had the disappointing and disputed loss against Illinois. Yeah, that was, you know, if you happen to see that game on television, they went and had an onside kick, and they got called for a taunting call, and it looked like it was against, <laughs> he presented the ball to his own man. It was really a poor call, and it uh, took any chance. They ought up upsetting Illinois, but uh, they are, a, as we said, a good football team. Dale, I am quite surprised that East Carolina won the toss and elected to give Syracuse the opportunity to get the ball and get this small crowd fired up early yeah me too I don't I, I don't understand that uh, maybe they thought that uh, the second half may be uh, 
more important than the, this first kickoff. And it's a split crew between Southern Independent officials and the Big East. And it'll also be interesting to see if East Carolina decides to kick short and avoid giving uh, Cadre Ismail a chance to return the kick. Florida State uh, tried it a few times, and then they decided to bloop it. East Carolina... Looks like an onside kick. ...is lining up close to the football. Now they shift. And we're set to go. And they do indeed kick high and short. Wooten signals for a fair catch. Same strategy he employed a week ago, and he makes it at the 26-yard line. Now the Syracuse offense getting the football for the first time in the game. Marvin Graves leading them in the choir boy huddle. John Cappuccioni, Jerry Sharp, John Rigg in the center, Terrence Wisdom, and Andrew Dees. With Graves, Walker Wooten, Gedney, Shelby Hill starting, and Padre Ismail on first and ten. That is Gedney in motion. Marvin keeps two backs in on the fake. The pump fake, he gets Gedney coming over the middle for a pickup of about eight yards. Chris Gedney's only had one catch last week. Ismail got clobbered on that. He is very slow to get up, and he is going to stay down. As you look at the defense of East Carolina, Dylan Cardill and company, the linebackers, Jones Burnett, outside linebackers, they call them defensive ends, but uh, here's the secondary, Hall, Floyd, Grandison, and Walker at strong safety, and Padre Ismail just getting back up. He got knocked into the pile, went head over heels backwards. He is a marked man, Padre Ismail. Syracuse will go with two tight ends as Kevin Barker is in the game. Here's a quick look at what happened at the end of the play. Watch, he's going to turn around to try to block, and he gets knocked. Look at his knee, and he gets doubled right over on top of Gedney. Now Syracuse with a tight formation, and they establish the fullback. Al Wooten, he is close to, but not necessarily close enough to the first down marker. Howard there first for East Carolina, and... Uh, they had six men in the line of scrimmage and two linebackers up. That was an eight-man front. And now they're going to probably do it again because it's going to be another third now. It's going to be short, not another third. Another short situation. Syracuse did not get the first down. And again, not much in the way of atmosphere here in the early going as Syracuse goes to the full house backfield. The wishbone look on third down and inches. Syracuse jumped off sides. Gedney came across the line of scrimmage after the initial movement by East Carolina. And will await the penalty, but Syracuse definitely moved. Yeah, somebody moved there, but now the defense can move as long as they obviously don't go across into that zone and are caught in there. So it would apparently be against Syracuse, I would assume. Unless East Carolina made contact. Yep, that's what I say, unless they came across that neutral zone and touched somebody or Ball was snapped while he was in there. There's a dead ball foul, offsides, on the defense, hey. five yards, first down. And so Syracuse comes out of it with a first down. It's a free one there, didn't they? And here we go now at first and ten at the 40-yard line. The option, and here is Walker. Got a block on the outside from Andrew Dees, and he has a gain of about five yards on the play. Jones, the linebacker, 44, brought him down. They had a gap defense inside. They got two guys right inside the guard gaps, and they hope to shut everything down inside. And now watch him trying to get out. Missed block by Wisdom on Jones, and Jones keeps going over and makes the tackle. And the earliest we've seen yet with Doug Wolback coming into the game at quarterback. Zurich is shifting now into the wishbone. They bring Ismail into the backfield. And here is backside pressure, and Bernard Carter brings down Doug Womack. Well, when you run this, you've got to figure, generally, the backside is not going to make enough penetration to get you, but you got to at least brush block him. Andy Dees 
did not touch Carter, and he just went right around and made the tackle. And did you see what Syracuse had set up? Shelby Hill was coming around to the reverse. It did not happen. Now it becomes third down and seven. Marvin Graves back in the game. And did they take too much time? I believe they did. I It'll become so. third down and 12. It's dead ball foul. Delay of game on the offense. First down, third down. And so it is an inauspicious start for Syracuse initially here. As now the Orange men are faced with third down and 12. Well, that backside, when Carter made the tackle, you got to believe they've at least got to knock him off his pursuit route, and they didn't. And uh, now with a delay of game, brings up a very long third down. Now let's see what Graves has cooked up on third down and 12. Split backs. Will they go out into the pattern? Long count and movement again by the right side of the Syracuse line. Adiz came up, 74 came up, but a, you know that everybody's pointing at everybody else. This is uncharacteristic here of East Carolina, if indeed it's against them. Let's see. Now you see him start to go, but now you also, now he, it looks like they made contact before Dees moved. But I was wrong the last time, so I'm probably wrong this time. And it looks like the call this time. Dead ball, false start. On the offense. Will indeed go against Syracuse. Well, these came up, but it looked like they came across and perhaps made contact. But as and you said, a, not a very good start for either team. And now it is third down at 17. Essentially the same formation, split backs. They fake the blitz. Send him. Good pressure now against Graves. And he's brought down and fumbles the football. Was he down? The official says he was, as Greg Gardo brought him down, a senior out of Johnstown, PA. And then the ball is dead. Jerry Dillon picked it up, and East Carolina's strategy works in their favor. Well, they didn't have a guy more, see, number five, not more than 10 or 12 yards off the football. Now he's dropped straight back. The hole opens up. Obviously, he's not going to get 17 yards that way. He goes to the outside. He was obviously down. But uh, that's that ball security Coach Pascaloni talked about earlier in the year. And that was Deion Johnson back, number 27, awaiting the punt of Pat O'Neill. East Carolina has not gone after many punters this year. And here is O'Neill. That was close to being blocked. Johnson at the 28. Fastest man on the team. Brought down by D.C. Surowicz. And we've got a timeout with 10.46 to go here in the first quarter. There's no score, but there'll be a penalty to talk about when we come back. There's been a clip assessed against East Carolina Clipping on the first punt return. On the run back, 15 yards, first down. So the East Carolina Pirates, who won the toss but declined to exercise their option until the second half stop Syracuse on their first possession and now we'll get a look at the very dynamic Jeff Blake but before we get the first play away they got, got problem with the chains Dave I'm sorry I just saw that the chains either broke or they did not get they've got them tangled up the chain gang has the chains tangled up on the far side of the field. Right there, you can see them trying to, they, they either got a communications line in there. Or maybe if there's a kink in the chains, it won't quite stretch out to 10. Well, they don't work for AT&T. Try to come on hooks. At any rate, a little break in the action. By the way, this is the third meeting between these two schools. Syracuse winning in 1988 down in Greenville, North Carolina, 38-14, and then winning here two years ago on John Biscop's fourth field goal of the game with four seconds remaining. They won that one 18-15. Big, big offensive line. Number 73, Tom Scott, 6'7", 338 pounds, and here's the freeze option and a fumble. And Kevin Mitchell on top of Jeff Blake. 
And I'm sure he said something to Mr. Blake as he really got good, good penetration early. And uh, the bobbling didn't help, but they put Blake right on his stomach. Watch, there's a little gap there. See him, they pull. They had an opening right up there. That's where the play was going to go. And the option was going to go to the right as they ran. Number 27, the man we talked about, who runs as a receiver and a running back. Second down at 15 now. Trips to the right, and here's a back back and a fumble. The Syracuse have it. Red Young was on top of it, and the orange men come away. Now that plus 12 turnover ratio just changed. Let's see what happened. Look, a little counter option look. But the ball just dropped. It is Glenn Young on top of the football with a fumble recovery. Two plays by East Carolina and a pair of fumbles. It was Daniels, 31, the fullback who fumbled the ball. It looked like he just dropped it. And we said East Carolina does not make a lot of fumbles, but they just made a crucial one there. Now Syracuse with... A slot to the left, they're going to keep it on the ground with Richardson, and he is met by the All-American, oh. Robert Jones, and he is stopped in his tracks. If they replay this, you watch what 44 does to 72, Capiccioni for Syracuse. He just bent him over backwards, drove him into the backfield, and made the tackle. Watch 44, right to the right of the screen. Watch what he does. Here comes the man. Watch. Whoa! Now that's a linebacker. He almost got his legs and then his arm. Ooh. He filled that hole, second down and 11, a loss of one. Regarded as the best senior linebacker in the country. The fullback? No, it's the pitch to Richardson. Face mask. And Greg Grandison brought him down on the far sideline. Did they throw a flag? No, they didn't. But uh, I'll say this. Syracuse was fortunate to give it. Yeah, they did throw one, I think, at the end. And ball is going to be spotted near the 13 nope. yard line. I thought I saw a yellow flag there. Okay, Anyways, we're not watching Grandison. What started for Florida as a freshman transferred to East Carolina. And it is now third down and six at the 13 yard line. It is Braves at quarterback. Staggered start by the backs. Marvin to the end zone. The catch by Shelby Hill. And he's going to be brought down at the four-yard line. Uh, the defensive play by Greg Floyd. Shelby almost shook free. As he's still looking for his first touchdown of the year. Pretty good protection. Straight drop, not even a play action. Wooten picks up. Every good protection. And uh, Shelby Hill one-on-one. -on -one. Watch Floyd. Gets him by the ankle. Breaks loose. Tries to get a little more yardage, but... Helped out by Walker, they finally stop him. That was the high top factor, Dale. Yeah. He had the lows on. He could have <laughs> shaken free of that shoe and maybe gone in. Now, the tight formation. And here's Al Wooten, the fullback, getting down to about the three-yard line. Had a little bit of entanglement after that play. Well, that, that's good. I, I really think that's good because I think it's good for Syracuse because they got to come out and say, you know, we cannot come into this game and be lack of days ago and get pushed around at all. I think that aggressiveness is good. There was no penalty, but I think uh, when you get Terrence Wisdom riled up like that, I think he's going to make sure this offensive line is coming up there uh, in a hostile mood. Let's see if Syracuse goes in the long count. Again, been a lot of jumping on the part of both teams. And there we have it. Yeah. I think that they saw something in the films that Carolina likes to really get off the ball early and that they anticipate the count, and they're going to do a little bit of uh, long count action. And you see on the right, 65, on the defense, have comes across, control. makes contact, and that's about the fourth time it's happened. Scott happened to get caught, but they have been stepping and going back in position, stepping and going back into position all game. All right, they move it now half the distance to the goal line. It is second down and one. Full house backfield. Already five penalties in the game. Double tight end. And they jump again. I 
suppose, Dale, it's a good gamble. You can only give up about a half a yard here. Yeah, but you know, it's it's something that's kind of catching. They, they did it out before when Syracuse was out. Uh, There's a dead ball foul oh, and another? outside on the defense, half the distance to the goal. Tony Wortham jumping off number 63. Yep. Six penalties now in the opening seven minutes of the game. That wasn't one of those gambles. That was just a mistake because you know Wortham was not pleased. And that little half yard gives you another step into the end zone. They're knocking on the door. Will they run straight? Will they run wide? Terry Richardson stopped shy and he lost yards. Well, this is a tough defense. When you are down that close, you get two penalties and you're not able to punch it in. That's a tough defense you're looking at. He actually lost yardage on that play or maybe a yard. Watch him. It's going to go to the left. There's the, the great pursuit by the linebackers, but the man who really made the play was 31 who came across and penetrated Floyd, rather 34, I should say. He bowled over two men at the point of the attack. Yep. Third down now and a full two yards. I think they'll run wide here. And Graves is not going anywhere. He lost a yard. Now they're at the three-yard line on fourth down. Let's see, what do you do here? Do they kick it or do they go for it? They are back to the three-yard line. Syracuse is going to take a timeout. Let's look at it here. There's the snap. And Jones just, uh, he's able to flow along the line of scrimmage, but they're really getting good pursuit. Davis, linebacker 53, was actually the guy who made the hit. Syracuse looks a little confused up front, Dave, and uh, they did not really pick up number 53 at all. They didn't even have anybody on him, and so I think they want to call a timeout and make sure that they've got this blocking straightened out. You know, when the defense packed in on that goal line uh, defense, Syracuse running that option, and that play does not develop as quickly as a, the old-fashioned pitch. Right. Remember the old pitch when you used to yep, lateral just turn, the ball just, under You just turn around and, and, and the ball went eight or nine yards uh, very quickly, and then you had the corner. But the idea is this defense, Dave, is not small, but they're a little undersized, but very quick, and they are flowing to the ball. You don't see that anymore, the spiral lateral. Yeah, used to remember those? Jim Brown and the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> remember that, Frank Ryan would take it? That spiral underhanded lateral? That's right. Gets you to the corner really quick. Looks like Biscop is... Uh, going to stay right where he is. No, nope, he's coming in to kick the field goal. At the very tail end of the timeout, they finally decide to bring in John Biscop, the man who had four field goals against East Carolina in 1989. Brian Picucci blocking at one end and Melvin Tootin at the other. Out of the hole of McDonald, is it good? Yes, it is. And John Biscuit has just hit his seventh field goal in eight tries. Syracuse has a lead of three to nothing. We'll be right back with a kickoff. Syracuse has taken a 3-0 lead, but it's really a case where Syracuse got the points and East Carolina got the momentum. Whenever you have a turnover deep in your own territory, what you're hoping your defense can do is keep the team out of the end zone. The Pirates did that despite fumbling on their first two plays from scrimmage. So again, Syracuse gets the points, but maybe East Carolina gets a little momentum and confidence out of holding Syracuse to three. That's a good point, Dan, and Syracuse getting those points after the consecutive fumbles by East Carolina. They've had the ball only two offensive plays, fumble it each time, and the second one recovered by Glenn Young. Pat O'Neill about to kick off for the 29th time this year. It's important for him to take him out of this game and get him back into the end zone and make him start in the 20. Don't let him have anything. It's the little things that count, and as we talked about, O'Neill has been super in doing the little things, and it's become a big thing, that is making sure the team generally starts, your opposition starts on their own 20-yard line and no further. Now Deion Johnson back to return if he gets a chance. Yep. He'll 
try it from two yards deep behind Cedric Van Buren. And he can fly. There he goes. He's going. They won't get him. This is going to be a 102-yard return, but there are two penalty markers down. There are two penalty markers down at the 20-yard line. Exciting. We told you Deion Johnson can fly. Two penalty markers to save the day for Syracuse on this kick return. Clipping on the return, holding on the return at the distance. Now that's a big break for Syracuse, but let's see if we can see what happens. He goes back into the end zone about two yards, and he just streaks up the left sideline. But Alley opened up right there. They got a nice block, and there's nobody going to catch that man. 5'8", 164, half the seven tucked in his jersey. And it all goes for nothing. How many penalties already in this game? And Under they are just destroying East Carolina. To the goal, first and, ten. and there were two on that play. They'll only put down one officially, right? Yeah, right, but it's, a, I mean, it's a, <laughs> We talked about the fact at the top of the show that they don't make a lot of mental mistakes, but boy, they've had a lot of fumbles and a lot of mental mistakes so far. And Deion Johnson stays in the game. He's in the backfield, lined up next to David Daniels. That was Williams in motion over the middle. That's the play that Florida State used. He pays the price. Ron Williams coming over the middle from the flanker spot. Same play Florida State used. Tom Scott is, he's the condominium. Mike yeah. McCallop, Keith Arnold, Kenneth Crawford, and Nick Wilson. This is the starting backfield. Daniels, Luke Fisher, the tight end. It is a first down for East Carolina. Van Buren and Daniels now in the backfield. Straight drop, five men out. Pressure and a sack. Garland Hawkins gets credit for the sack. Pressure by Mitchell up inside, forced him into 95, and good coverage downfield. As you look at the Syracuse Orange and the 3-4, Rooks, Mitchell, and Wentworth up front. You're going to see some changes in there as the game goes on. Wooden, Young, Lasardi, and Hawkins, the linebackers. Hawkins got the sack. Walker, Joseph, Sanquist, and Monomora in the secondary. A team-leading fourth sack for Garland Hawkins. Second down and nine. One back out. That's Deion Johnson. Look at that move. And Sanquist, short-handed, brings him down, but it's another first down. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Deion Johnson streaking down the sideline, and Sanquist makes the stop. East Carolina on the move, and this should not come as a surprise. Jeff Blake needed 235 yards in this game to set a single season record. Blake is two out of two now, 25 yards. And movement Another by mistake. the right side of the offensive line. That time it was Crawford and Wilson who popped up. I don't know if they keep records for the most penalties <laughs> in a game. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Again there, Dale, you could have nailed two different people for a penalty. Right. So it becomes first down at 15. That time the tight end was in motion. Late oh. throw is short. Luke Fisher was open. They ran a little crossing pattern, and the tight end was open, but he didn't have that ball anywhere near him. Luke Fisher was the man who did come in motion before the snap. So they do multiple things offensively. Now it's second down at 15. You know, you talk about junior college sometimes. That's where Deion Johnson came out of, from Coffeyville Junior College. In Kansas. In Kansas, yep. And uh, once in a while, you can get a gem out of those ranks. Now watch this with trips, three wide receivers to the left, and a sprint out that way. Daniels blocking on Hawkins. Hawkins gets him and brings him down. We said he doesn't hesitate to run. The 
mini Major Harris, but uh, good pursuit by Garland Hawkins, number 95 from behind. Brings him down way short. Man, he anything. showed you some kind of speed that time. He outran Daniels. Watch 31. Yep. He just gets hit by Daniels. The fullback bounces off and then continues the pursuit. And look, he got him by the shoulder, Dave. That's good, good pursuit. Pat O'Rourke in the game on the defensive line. Tony Jones in the secondary. There's Hawkins. And motion by Williams. Behind the intended man, Hunter Gallimore. And Syracuse holds defensively. We've got a punt coming up from John Jett. Good push on the ball defensively. They had the offensive lineman from East Carolina back quickly into Blake's face. He did manage to get the ball off, but they're putting some pressure on him. Shelby Hill is back in single safety, waiting at his 20-yard line. Montemore and Grosvenor drop off. We've got a flag down at the line of scrimmage, and they try to kick it away from Shelby Hill, whom they respect as much as Ismail. And Shelby takes it back to the 25-yard line. We have a penalty marker down. What else is new? Yeah, I think it's good. I don't know if it, he looked like he made a preliminary sign of legal block. I don't know. Let's see. Illegal procedure. On the kicking neck, oh. less than seven men on the line. Somebody was back in the backfield, obviously. You have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. It's not that they didn't have enough men in, but somebody was backed up in the position to uh, probably protect on the outside, was supposed to be in the line, and stepped back, was not on the line of scrimmage. Well, Dale, how many different penalties are there? Because East Carolina is <laughs> going through the smorgasbord we're, we're here gonna, in the yeah, first quarter. We're going to get the book out and see, right, do you know? Okay, so it'll be a five-yard penalty and a... Chance for another run back for Shelby Hill. John Jett did a fine job of trying to pin Hill in and not giving him much return room. Now they're back at the 30-yard line. Jett out of Reedville, Virginia. Last time he was here in the Carrier Dome, he had the best single game any punter has had in East Carolina history, averaging 52.2 yards. That's a, he only day. punted three times yeah. that day. And here he is punting for his second time in the first quarter. Another timeout. I don't know if they got the, the, the right ball in the game. They want to, you know, you get you get to play with your own ball, and uh, they the center stepped out and said, this is not the one I want to play with. And they said, okay, we'll get you the one you want. And if you're a putter, you want to use a, a ball that's been broken in a little bit. You want to use one that will go far, too. Exactly. <laughs> There's Jet. Looks like he has a little bit of a, a brace on his uh, right knee, his punting knee. No block. The return is on, and Jet with a returnable kick to Shelby Hill at the 32. Down he goes. Slip. And look who is down, covering on the play. Jones. Robert Jones, the All-American linebacker. Looks like Shelby's gone to those uh, extra short football pants uh, that Cadre Ismail wears. Here comes Marvin Graves, Syracuse leading 3-0. Marvin Graves has not been any kind of running threat this season. His longest run is 10 yards. Well, you and I talked about this. It just seemed that they were, he was not running the ball even when he had the opportunity to and uh, perhaps trying to get himself more into the passing game and not being the running quarterback. I don't think he's run as effectively as he did prior to being injured at Penn State. Yeah, I remember he got clobbered in that game last year, and that was uh, never quite the same at that season. I think he's obviously healthy, a little, perhaps a little different philosophy, but right now they need a dose of confidence. They got, I think, as Dan said, and very wisely said, that uh, maybe they got the momentum. Syracuse has got to get some back. Well, we have an official timeout on the field with 3.34 to go here in the first quarter. Again, it is a split crew, biggies, and uh, Southern Independent officials. And they've all had a chance to toss their yellow flags here in the first quarter. It gives us an opportunity to tell you early in this game that if you have any comments about what you're seeing or hearing, we certainly enjoy hearing from you. Drop us a line at Cook Cable Vision, 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, New York, 13202. And Dale promises to return your letters in Each longhand. Each and every one. In longhand. If you can read it, I'll send it. 
Marvin Graves now at first down. The tailback, David Walker. Oh boy, Reagan's hurt. 75, the center. Oh, that hurts. Looks like he got it in the head. Watch. He's going to go down right there with Cotton, the nose guard. And then well, there's the, the leap by Walker. But the pile ended up on top of Reagan, and uh, they're going to check him out right now. Must have been the initial surge off the ball. And he has been really a rock. Uh, a sophomore out of Del Mar, New York, Albany area. Very, very uh, intelligent, poised young man who stepped in and Syracuse really hasn't missed a beat at the center spot since uh, John Flannery departed and along with Dan Erickson. James Monroe is the backup center out of Canada. And there's Monroe right there. One thing, boy, you do not like to lose is the center. And you know why? I mean, he's the first guy that ever touches the ball on every play. And uh, now, Dave, you know, you hate to jinx anybody, but you got to say, is it going to be the same when he snaps it? And unlike other sports, you don't have a chance to warm up as the backup center. You got to come in there and your first snap is for real. Yeah, well, maybe Reagan will come back. Don Lowe is going to sit him down and uh, figure out. Pal Pascoloni says, let's let me know if he can come back. Now let's keep an eye on that exchange. James Monroe out of St. Laurent, Quebec. And the draw play, David Walker. Close Still to running down. They call him the Energizer. He's still going. Yep. I watched him on Cotton 94, the nose guard. You're going to see Monroe. Let's see what he does. All right, a little bit high, but he turns Cotton, gets a little bit of help with the other guard, and then you see the leg drive. Reagan's going to go inside and get looked at. Now we're down to two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter as Gedney motions. Pop pass in the flat taken by Cadre Ismail, brought down by Chris Hall. Oh, just short. A first down. Short. Yep, just first short. Down. That was a first down play, and it's Ismail getting the quick. Hitch off, yeah, just a little hitch. Just kind of go on out, turn around, and if you're open, I'll hit you. And of course, they got to give him a little cushion there. Obviously, they they're not going to. Chris Hall was there, 40, but the, they're going to give him a little cushion. Second and very short. Antonio Johnson flanked to the bottom of the screen, moved up to the line of scrimmage. There's a quick hitter and a quick count too. Yep. And but, now first down at the 42-yard line of East Carolina. I'm just going to say, you know, you got East Carolina worried about being offsides, you know, saying, geez, don't go until that darn ball is snapped. Then you get up, you go off on a quick count, and you get a nice push off from a backup center, and uh, they get a nice haul up front. You saw Marcus Lee's numbers. He's in the game at fullback. They like to establish him up the middle because he hits the mark quickly. A little quicker than Al Wooten. 3-0 Syracuse, two minutes to go, first quarter. Graves looks to Ismail. He makes the move. He turns it. He's down the sideline, and out of bounds is the missile. And you can just tell what the strategy is here. Get him those quick... Pitches in the flat. Yeah, right. Get that corner right up on him and then blow by him. Yeah, it just, it just it's like a four yard, five yard out and turn, and uh, and these guys are gonna give him a cushion. And uh, Grandison and uh, finally comes over to help out, but uh, they got a it's just a long pitch. Richard Wright also there. Marvin Graves is four out of four. Terry Richardson is lined up as a wide receiver. Syracuse in effect has three wide receivers in the game now. And they give it to the tailback, Walker. 
He was carrying Robert Jones with him for an additional yard. Jones has six individual tackles and assists, seven total tackles, and the first quarter is still here. He was fourth nationally in tackles last year. There's Bill Lewis on the sideline, formerly the defensive coordinator and defensive backfield coach at Georgia. He was there in 1980 when they won the national championship. Minute and 10 seconds to go in the first quarter on second and eight. Braves on the pitch back to Walker. And it becomes a huge loss back to the 34-yard line. That may have been a halfback option pass. Well, it may have been, but uh, when you fumble it, it's a real difficult play, obviously, to pull off. Let's see what happened. They were blitzing. They're going to blitz Jones. They picked him up. There's the pitch just way out in front. I mean, his arm would have had to be been about uh, a foot and a half longer, and then Jones actually comes back and <laughs> puts the hit on him. That's another tackle for him. They made the Braves pitch that ball early. Now it's third down and 22. Incomplete. Antonio Johnson was there, but they put a ferocious rush on Marvin Graves. They really were. They came right at the gut after him. Cardill, the tackle. Jones, 44 there. Watch Jones. See him go? And now he says, oh, here, here's a hole. Now Lee tries to block him. Lee should have cut him. You can't take that man chest to chest because this is exactly what's going to happen. He shrugged Lee off and went right out after him. you got to get down on that man's legs. you got to chop him. A long, long field goal attempt coming up now for John Biska. He's kicked one already. On the way, and it is good. John Biska, again, becoming the story for Syracuse against East Carolina as he was two years ago. He is two for two in the field goal department. That one about 48 yards, and Syracuse has a 6-0 lead with 10 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And Biscop, but the snap a little bit inside and down, handled well by McDonald. And you know, he'll be the first to tell you, Biscop, as he hugs McDonald, hey, you did a heck of a nice job of putting that ball down, man, because I didn't know you were going to get it, and he did it. Big field goal. Biscop and the Pat O'Neill were out practicing on Friday on their own here in the Dome. And they came out early before today's game to get in some uh, additional practice. Again, there's one of those little things. Now, there's Biscop, but McDonald was the guy who handled the snap. It wasn't a poor snap, but it wasn't a perfect snap. And that's the things that really count. Somebody who's able to do that, it's a real skill. Syracuse still got that. Their confidence, Dave, in their offense has gone up and down this game. They do two or three things right, and then they make one big mistake, and it costs them. How about the big mistake that East Carolina made on the last kickoff? They had a clip and a hole, and it wiped out a 102-yard return by Deion Johnson. Now, he's uh, going to have to get a little deeper then, because Deion Johnson, with his half his two and seven tucked in his pants, is just waiting for this one. This little guy can fly. Let's see if O'Neill tries to kick it to the near corner, to the left corner of the end zone, and keep it away from Dion. I would. And that is exactly what he does as he yes. doubles it right through the end zone. <laughs> Inside for a touchback and hit the, hit the marker. Hit the pylon. That was a pretty nifty kick by O'Neill, who usually drives him high and deep, and that time he knuckleballed it. And he gets another touchback out of it. I mean, this thing was flying. It got down there in a, in a real hurry, and it's got to hit that pile on it, be inside. <laughs> he hit it like there was a $100 bill on it waiting for him. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Syracuse leads in 6 nothing. It is Cedric Van Buren on the sweep. He's got seven yards. Jim Spencer in number 90. Good penetration. A guy who has not played a lot, but 
He's going to get some action today, Dave. And that is the end of the first quarter here in the Dome. A pair of John Biscuit field goals accounting for all the scoring. We'll be right back. Syracuse on top, 6-0 at the end of the first quarter. Certainly a big key was the East Carolina penalties. The Pirates committing seven penalties in the first quarter. And to put that into perspective, the Pirates came into the game averaging eight turnovers a game, so they almost had that at the end of one quarter. Also, if you average that out through an entire game, that would be 28 penalties for a game. That's the total number of penalties that Syracuse had for the season coming into the game today. One other note from the side. Over, uh, during the excitement after Syracuse kicked the second field goal, John Ray came out of the locker room and back to the sidelines. He has a bruised shin, but he will come back and play at center for SU. Oh, great job. Ernie Davis-Brown, 98, just did a super job of jamming that play up. And that was the uh, second down play, first play of the second quarter. It might interest you to know that uh, the record for the most amount of penalties by a team playing Syracuse is 15 suffered by Columbia in 1947. I remember that team. They committed a lot of penalties. <laughs> you got it is third down now at five. This is the opening drive of the second quarter. Look at all the receivers crowded in that one area. Now the tight end moves across. And Jeff Blake has time over the middle. The umpire gets hit. And Deion Johnson has the first down catch. You look at the defense, Dave. There's a lot of new faces in there. Greco, 51 into the linebacker. You got James Spencer in. And we see the ball over the middle, a la Florida State. And you see the official catch it. There's Greco, 51. Sandquist is going to come up along with Joseph and help. Actually, Joseph does it by himself. But a couple of new faces in there. Spencer has not played a lot. Ernie Davis-Brown has. And O'Rourke also on the nose. So well, the feeling was after Florida State, Syracuse has not them. used enough people defensively. No. Nice play in the middle. Spencer. And it was Spencer for hire. I like this guy. I've seen him in practice. He's, uh, he's a tough kid. There's the first quarter stats, Dave. Doesn't seem like Syracuse got that many yards, does it? Well, you know, I think it was one, like I said, I, I think it's they did two or three things right and then one thing wrong. And uh, as we look at it, you can see... Uh, Turnovers, Syracuse is all right. Uh, one for the Pirates, but penalties, woo! Seven for 48, going for that Columbia record. Second down now, and 10. Draw play, and it is Cedric Van Buren. Got a good lead block from Luke Fisher. Brought down by number 99, Pat O'Rourke. So Syracuse... Uh, Figuring, obviously, they said after the Florida State game, people got tired. We got to give a people, our people, a break on occasion, so they are doing that. The defensive line, especially Mitchell out, Rooks out. Third down now, and what looks to be a passing situation. Third down and six. Johnson in motion, and over the middle, there's the catch by Fisher, the tight end. It takes Young to bring him down with Walker at midfield. And that underneath game is hurting Syracuse again. Yep, it, it, it gives them a first down. If they don't give up a touchdown, then it works. If you let them go all the way down the field and he don't doesn't cost you, then so be it. But watch, see him drag out underneath. He holds on the, on the line of scrimmage. He hesitates. And then when he sees that the area is cleared out, the linebackers have cleared out, he cuts back underneath. Gets the first down. Hunter Gallimore, number 82, is in the game now for East Carolina as Blake retreats. They're running that play every again. time. And Deion Johnson has running room. Deion makes the move. And JoJo Wooden brings it down from behind at the 15-yard line. He can fly, Deion Johnson. Florida State ran this play I don't know how many times, and what it does, they wait for the linebackers. Watch the linebackers clear out. Now the linebackers are gone. Now watch him circling underneath. He's all by himself. And then, uh, actually two missed tackles there, Dave. Both Walker and Glenn Young missed the tackle. It was Miami that first ran that series against Syracuse last year. Florida State picked up on it, and Tulane did it. And now East Carolina. Deep handoff and a nice cut up the middle by Cedric Van Buren. He is inside the 10-yard line. Rooks and Mitchell and company are back in. Can you feel now the confidence that East Carolina is playing with? They've got to bounce in their steps. Well, this is what Syracuse has to do defensively now. They have to come up with a big play. They're going to have to hold them to a field goal attempt. Hey, Dale, who's lined up against the condominium, Tom Scott? Let's check him out. 
He is the left tackle, 6'7", 338 pounds. On second and five, and the crowd getting into it now behind the defense. A little question, guards talking to the quarterback. Same play, other way. Daniels for Van Buren outside. And Jojo Wooden uh, slow to get to his feet. Well, there are people lying all over this field here after these plays. Just a little handoff, just a... Van Buren, a running back, down inside the five, just inside the five, as they look at Mr. Wooden. Flexing his left leg. Syracuse is already using uh, Matt Greco in a linebacker spot. Lusardi not playing at this point. And standing about 10 yards away on crutches watching this is Dan Conley. So Reagan out. And now him. There's a guy that they'd like to have in uniform, huh? JoJo's going to be carried off right in front of Dan Conley. And a very concerned Paul Pasqualoni watching his men go down. For the moment, East Carolina is down six to nothing, but they are driving. Peter Zofi, number 89 in the game. Quick hitch pattern, uh, timing to the end zone. Driver, touchdown! Clayton Driver with a catch, and East Carolina has tied the game at 6-6 with the extra point pending. Just a timing pattern, driver 85 was just in the right place and it was a perfect throw. Not very much that Dwayne Joseph could do on that play as that ball was thrown to the side of the end zone. Hard to defend that one, it's either out of bounds or a perfect catch. Anthony Brenner gives East Carolina a 7-6 lead. We have 11.15 to go in the first half, and East Carolina is leading Syracuse 7-6. Quarterback Jeff Blake has hit on 6 of 8 for 85 yards, and what you're about to see is his ninth touchdown pass in the last three games. He just turns, lofts it, puts a perfect spiral on it, and driver just in the perfect position and it happens so fast it's very difficult for a, a defensive man to stop that play that's why they use it down there the touchdown by Clayton driver that is his seventh of the year seven touchdown catches for driver out of College Park Georgia now East Carolina leading at seven to six and Syracuse has to consider themselves fortunate because of that earlier touchdown return that was called back. They kicked it short and away from Ismail and Richardson earlier. Don't be surprised to see an onside kick. They pulled it off against Illinois and got a 15-yard penalty for taunting, which was in error. wonder if you'd see Al Wooten lateral the ball back. Or run it. And they're going to let it go into the hands of Richardson. He's hemmed in and brought down. Shy of the 30-yard line at the 28. John Reagan is going to be back in at center for Syracuse. So Reagan does return. And Womack is going to come in. And see, the last time Womack was in, he got dropped from behind on backside pressure. There was absolutely no block on Carter, number 80, and he brought Womack down. Let's see what the slippery one does. Beginning the series, Doug Womack, 7-6, East Carolina leads. Womack running. Running very well. Still going. And he is all the way into East Carolina territory at the 47-yard line. Now, there was no backside pressure there. That was very quick. Watch Womack. He's going to go to his right. 
He quickly rides the fullback, but see there's Carter behind him. He wasn't going to get fooled this time. Now the outside man, see him go right there with the pitch man, and then he cuts up inside a nice block, and he puts his head down, and that powerful 165 or so pounds drives down for a nice game. About 23 yards of that carry. Now, Syracuse having trouble switching into the wishbone. Ismail got confused with Richardson. And Gedney, they're talking amongst themselves now, and Syracuse has taken their second timeout of the first half. Well, they, they definitely were confused. They have started to use Ismail in the backfield, number 45, who was has traditionally been just a receiver. And you see Womack telling, now Richardson says, do I go over to the left? And then you go to the right, and then Ismail says, what's unconfused me here? And then they were talking to uh, Gedney, the tight end. Well, now you think Syracuse is confused. What do you think about East Carolina saying, geez, what are they going to do here? Now, they, they must have seen it last week. They saw the Florida game. There's no doubt that they know that Syracuse used Ismail in the backfield, but uh, they were a little confused there. And actually, I think when they used Ismail, I don't know if Womack was a quarterback. Yes, he was. Okay. They pitched it to uh, Ismail out of the wishbone. We've got 10.39 to go in a staccato first half. It's been kind of ugly. Punctuated by penalties. Yeah, lots of penalties, mostly on East Carolina's part. Hill goes to the left, Ismail to the right. Al Wooten is the fullback, and Terry Richards in the tailback. Womack is the quarterback, and here they go again on the ship. And it's a pitch back to Richardson. Good block by Ismail. Richardson tiptoed down the sideline, but he stepped out shy of the first down. He went 12 yards before they blew the whistle there. One thing this does, you like a nice little drive, gives that defense a chance to rest, a chance to talk a little bit about what they've got to do. In Florida State, they never got a rest. They what, 30 more offensive plays run by Florida State. That was one tired defense in the second half from Syracuse. Now it is second down and a long four coming up. Seven to six, East Carolina leads. Ismail's out, Johnson and Hill are the wideouts. Womack might throw. No, it's Graves, and it's completed to Gedney. But there is a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. I was so shocked, I thought it might be Womack throwing. <laughs> that was shocking. Penalty marker is down on the far side of the field. Let's see what it is. Holding. There's a hole. On the offense. See, he just drops back, runs that option, gets the linebackers going one way, and hits Gedney up underneath in front of the safety. But it's all going to go for naught as that holding call is also from the spot. That would have been Gedney's second catch of the game. Boy, this is a this is a killer penalty, isn't it? Holding on the offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Well, it's going to be a second in about 13, 14. Ten penalties. 68 yards in penalties. And there have been at least two penalties, and there were two different infractions, but they can only assess one. I've seen offenses generate less than 68 yards in a quarter. Syracuse back now on their half of the field at their own 48-yard line. It's second down and 14. Blitz. No flag yet. There's a screen to Al Wooten, but they get through the screen and they bring Wooten down. I, I think Andy Dees was supposed to pick up somebody out there. He Wooten got hit almost immediately on the screen. They were blitzing up inside. Ernie Lewis came through and he brought down Al Wooten behind the screen. Watch him come from the inside. There's Jones. Now Dees makes an initial hit. Can't get there's the block. He cannot get the block. He reaches out to try to stop, but Unable to stop, number 98, Lewis. Again, Ismail out, Hill and Johnson to the left and right, respectively. Second, third down now, and they need 13. Raves is sacked. Robert Jones gets him. 
He is a force. He ran right through Terry Richardson. They're trying to hit him in the chest. Now, I would not hit him in the chest. I think I'd try to cut him. Watch 44. They run a twist. Watch the twist. Now, there he comes. Now, watch what happens. Watch what Richardson does. And he just bounces right off of that, and there you go. I think you've got to get that man's leg. That's the second sack of Graves by East Carolina. You call that perfectly, Dale. He just ran over him, upper body strength. I think you want to be uh, around his knee level. Now O'Neal. With a wobbler that's returnable, and it's that man Johnson back there, Dion, oh. with a burst. Somebody had part of his uniform, and maybe Wooten, and he brings him down. Syracuse trails East Carolina 7-6, and the Pirates are set to plunder when we come back. East Carolina is set to go, and Syracuse just now getting set defensively. Gallimore is in motion. A possible reverse. It's on the ground, and the Orange have it. Jim Wentworth covered up the football as they were setting up a reverse play. No hit, just bad transaction. They have to take advantage of this break. They have to. Watch, there's Blake. He's going to give it to the fullback, and then it was not even close as they tried to get the ball to Dion, just not even close. Need to check this that shoe's recovered two today. That's uh, one for Wentworth. Now the offense, they really, if they want to get their confidence back, Dave, this is crucial right here. Marvin Graves is the quarterback. Ismail is in. He's got man-to-man -man coverage. Marcus Lee is the fullback, number 32. Play action. No, it's a handoff to Walker trying to go wide. And a nice short tackle made in the secondary there by number 22, Fred Walker, the freshman out of Aiken, South Carolina. Walker on Walker, but you know what Walker does so well? He got hit and he just lunges for that extra two yards, and that's a, that's really helpful there. And uh, tough, tough football player. Run the ball, hit him quickly. I don't think you want to sit back there and let them blitz. It has been only one touchdown for the offense now in seven and a half quarters. Gedney is slide left. Gary Farrell in the game. They throw in the flat to Ismail, and he makes the catch. And he's still going. They were lucky to get that off. Jones was right in Graves' face, and he threw that and didn't even see where Ismail was. I mean, he knew where he was supposed to be. Fortunately, watch what he does. Now, he's going to do this. is no play action. This is a straight drop. Watch 44. Yow! He was falling backwards when he got rid of that ball. He was. He was on his way back without being hit. He was just leaning away from him. Let's check in with Dan Horn on the sideline. All right, guys, East Carolina's last offensive possession only lasted one play. You might have noticed that JoJo Wooden was not on the field for it. He remains on the bench with his left knee iced. He's not sure whether he will come back and play today or not. He didn't hurt it on contact. It just buckled on the turf. Interesting, too, Dan, that East Carolina has two possessions in this game of two plays and one play, and not, they have the lead of 7-6. to six. Not typical of the Pirates this year. That first-team offense had not made a turnover since the season-opening game against Illinois, and they've popped it up a couple of times in the first half today. And now it is second down and seven. Syracuse needs to get it into the end zone on this drive. They've been handed a gift. Farrell is in the game. Number 82, he's in the slot. The blitz is coming. Graves on the option. Nice fake by Marvin. And he gives up the football as now he goes a down. Whistle. They had a whistle before that ball was out, but that ball security. And you know that he is upset with himself. He ran into Ismail. They're going to call timeout. Watch what happens. Here it is, a little bit of a look, a little bit of a, a counter or, or a uh, to the fullback look. And then he just reads the action. Look where that ball is. And now he starts to, now he doesn't tuck it away. He does not, and he runs into Ismail. And when he lands, the concussion pops the ball out. And now the measurement to see if it's enough for a first down. Graves has given up the football twice. It is a first down. Yeah, half a football. Both times after making contact with the ground. But you're only going to get that call so many times. Right. You look at Graves, 36 carries minus 56. Now that's obviously from being sacked, but 
He made a nice run there. It's that tucking that ball away at the end that he's got to do. That was an eight-yard gain by Marvin. His longest of the year has been 10. Still hobbled by the turf toe he suffered a couple of weeks ago. Marcus Lee, touchdown! That's what they had to do. Now you got to start convincing East Carolina you guys were lucky. I don't think it's going to happen, but that's the first step in it. Good job. And Syracuse takes the lead back now at 12 to 7. Will they go for two? They might. I think they will. They're leading 12 to 7. Two field goals and a touchdown. And we'll see what the uh, Orangemen have planned. They, they're a little confused. They're down to 18 seconds. They're just running a regular huddle. They're going for two, no doubt about it. Second touchdown of the career for Marcus Lee. Will they run the short side out? Down to five seconds. Three, two, one. They're going to be delayed. Nope. Yes, yes, they did blow the whistle and throw the flag, unable to run the two-point conversion before incurring the delay of game. Foul, delay of game on the offense, five yards. They're going to go for one now. they got to go for one. You know, usually, Dave, they always line up in that position where they have the center, who's actually the end, over the ball, and it always makes the team play that whether they're going to come out for two or not. That time, they kind of went right out into a huddle, but nobody was sure what they were going to do. It appeared, and uh, they weren't settled, and now they're going to go for one. They do have you know, the trick play off of that, but I don't know if they want to show it in this situation. Well, they got to show a long extra point here. John Biscop out of the hole of Mark McDonald looking for Syracuse's 13th point. And he gets it. And so Syracuse now leads 13 to 7. We have six minutes and one second to go in the first half. By the way, at halftime, since this is the halfway point of the season, or it will be at halftime, we put together some of the unusual plays of the first half of this year. There have been a lot of them. And now let's check in with Dan Horn. All right, one of the most encouraging things about that drive for Syracuse was that it lasted a few plays. You realize you have to go back more than seven quarters to find a touchdown drive for Syracuse that lasted more than two plays. In the Florida State game, Syracuse's touchdowns came on that opening drive, just two plays, and then a kickoff return by Ismail. And in the Tulane game before that, Syracuse didn't have a touchdown in the second half. So the Orangemen put a drive together there to take the lead back from East Carolina. All right, Dan, and we'll uh, keep you informed on... Jojo Wooden's injury and the likelihood of his return to the game. Syracuse taking advantage there of the fumble and going in 37 yards. Well, we said that that was really imperative that if you get a gift, you really have to be able to cash in on They did, but you know, <laughs> this East Carolina group, they obviously still worry me. That guy right there, number 27, he is just a flash, isn't he? Deion Johnson, the man that Dale is speaking of. Now, we can't say it often enough. He did have a 102-yard return wiped out by both a holding and a clipping penalty. And Illinois, a top-20 team, pretty good team from the Big Ten, was really extended to beat these guys. This is a good football team. Nope, this one's going out of bounds, I think. Cedric Van nope. Buren touches it. Oh, what a hit. Somebody submarined that pile. He's up shy of the 25-yard line. Carlos Jackson really creamed the interference, and that is going to cost a timeout as they're going to look at an East Carolina player because Carlos Jackson just obliterated that pile. Well, there's 5.56 to go in the first half. Certainly a lot of time for East Carolina to march it down the field, but turnover prone as they have been, also a lot of time for Syracuse to come up with the football again and set the offense up. Greg Grandison, who yeah. played at the University of Florida as a freshman and transferred to Pearl River Junior College, is the man who's down. He's a good one. He's, he's, he started for the University of Florida, actually, as a true freshman. He's, uh, he's the guy that got it. Uh, that was uh, three solo tackles for him. Let's watch Jackson, 23. 
There's the, the pile starting to go down. Watch right here. Right there is where he got a shot. He really took a shot. And it, I don't know if that was Jackson. It might have been Dardar. At any rate, Grandison is out for the time being. Three wide receivers to the left side. And they bootleg it. In pursuit is Chip Todd. He got a hand on him, but here is Blake taking the protective dive up to the 40-yard line. Now Chip Todd, 57 in for Syracuse. We're seeing some different, different players. Let's see how Todd got in there. Watch him. Run across. Oh, they tried to block him up high, and then uh, they hoped that Blake can outrace him. He did barely. Watch Todd just get the ankle, cause him to stumble, but he had a lot of territory to go. Picked up a first down. Inside linebackers are Lusardi and Glenn Young. Young takes a spot up very close to the line of scrimmage. Lusardi's lined up on the near side. They don't blitz. Play action. Blake. He puts it up. He's going deep for Deion Johnson over his head and out of bounds. Mitchell got to Blake. Wooden obviously out, tied in, and they're using him as a rush linebacker. Greg Watch. Walker defending. But there's the roll. See the roll by Mitchell? Nice job by Mitchell. He rolls off the block by Crawford, the center, and uh, put pressure on. Nickel situation now. O'Rourke is in the game, along with Jones in the secondary. Mitchell lined up on the left side to the wide side of the field now for the pass rush. They contain him. They go short side to Dion. And he has a first down to the Syracuse 45-yard line. He appears to be a talker, too. Deion Johnson, just get him the ball. You know, he runs about a four-yard pattern, but that's what they want him to do. Turn it up. Look at the speed and the quickness on the kid. And uh, Sandquist brings him down. Short-handed tackler he is. First down East Carolina. 5.15 to go. Uh, As cut, back. cut back by Van Buren. He's close to another East Carolina first down. He's going to be about a yard shy. And here come the Pirates. Run a little cut back with Van Buren. They start him going one way and then hopes he gets the defense flowing and then cuts back against the rush. Hunter Gallimore and David Daniels come into the game. 13 7 Syracuse. 435. First half. Now Mitchell's lined up on the nose. A fake by Blake as he pulls it out and cranks it up to go deep. Joseph breaks it up, intended for Ron Williams in the end zone. Nice play, Dwayne Joseph. Yes, Joseph had it all the way, knew exactly where the play was going. Watch him. Good body position. Might have been able to make a grab off the head. Made a good play on the ball. He yes. turned around and went after it. They're holding George Rooks a little bit here. Let's see if he can get a call. They're trying to double team Rooks. Rooks is lined up on the outside now, number 91. Blake over the middle. He's got Williams, the man who just dropped that ball in the end zone. He a little slow to whistle there, weren't they? But they do get a first down out of it. Yeah. Inside the 35 yard line. Chip Todd, John Lusardi, and the linebacking core. It is a first down for East Carolina with 4.16 to go. Where's he on? He's up at the top of the screen. They run it to David Daniels or Van Buren up the middle. No gain. Van Buren was the ball carrier. Van Buren checks the uniform, makes sure all the pads are still in place. Clayton Driver checks into the game. He's the man who caught the touchdown pass earlier. And Deion Johnson again goes way out to the right. 
It's covered man for man out there by Dwayne Joseph. They look to Johnson. They get it to him, but it's off his hands. And we'll have third down and nine coming up. Interesting to see whether they bring the inside linebackers. They've been kind of leaving them there. They were running that play where they would clear out the, the linebackers and then bring somebody back over the middle. They've been successful with it. Let's see what they do now. Bill Lewis has his headsets off. He'll wear them when the team is on defense. Mitchell stays on the nose. Rooks rushing from one side. Chip Todd from the other. The tight end is in motion. Blake is time. Down the middle. There's Johnson. He's got a first down reception. Deion Johnson brought down by Chip Todd. But it's a first down for East Carolina. They really give him a shot. There's a crossing pattern over the linebackers. Ooh, nice hit. But he bounces, and then like a pinball, he comes back before Todd brings him down. And now he's going to go over. He's going to take a little rest. JoJo Wooden heading for the Syracuse locker room on crutches. Meanwhile, East Carolina with a first down at the 15-yard line. Cutting it back is Van Buren. Looked like he was thinking about tossing it back to the quarterback. I don't know. He was trying to look as we see Wooden, another injury. Although Reagan came back, that's the problem with Division I football, any football, actually. You get those injuries, and you've got to have quality people to replace him. On the sideline, Pasqualoni puts the headsets on. He wants to be intimately involved in the defensive scheme of things. 13-7 Syracuse, 2.25 to go. Where is it? Up the middle and not much. Ernie Davis Brown, Glenn Young. Combining on the stop. It's a big third down. They've been pretty productive the last couple of third downs, East Carolina. As a matter of fact, this season against Syracuse, opponents converting 40% of their third down plays. Now, Florida State really upped that one, though. They, had, they must have done 60 or 70%. 40%. Third down and eight. Deion Johnson not on the field. The one back look, the timing pattern for Driver, and he can't get to this one. Joseph was up on him. Now we'll get a field goal attempt for East Carolina. This will be a straightaway shot for Anthony Brenner. Don't you just love to see somebody stay right like that and kick it head on? They never do the watch. Then they take two steps to the left. One, two. On the way, and it is good. Anthony Brenner splits the uprights and makes this a 13 to 10 game with a minute and 34 seconds left to go in the first half. Still time for Syracuse to try to get something back offensively. Yeah, I don't think they're going to sit on it, obviously. I, they'd like to come back and get that two-minute offense in gear, or the minute 34 offense. They've if only given up 10. Excuse me, they've just been saying they've only given up 10 points, but that drive there took some time off the clock, and East Carolina's been able to move the ball and have been hurting themselves. Well, if you thought East Carolina would be an easy win for Syracuse, guess again. Yeah. If that second opinion we talked about, this is a tough football team. They're on the way up. They scored 31 against Illinois, 20 against Memphis State, 47 against Central Florida, 31 against South Carolina, and 56 against Akron. Illinois... He was 21. Blake was 21 of 42. 353 yards and three touchdowns. He's thrown here in the first half 15 times, completed nine for 123 yards. Marvin Graves, six out of seven, 73 yards. Now, last time they kicked off, and Richardson was able to get an intermediate kick. Ismail is going to that side now. 
What will East Carolina do? They got them all bunched up there. Looks like they're going to try to close on part of the field. See him right there? You got all those guys, and they're going to tell the kicker, put it over where most of our bodies are. That would be now they're going to move right at the very end. And it's the bloop. Is Miles going to get it at the 16? He almost broke it. He got up to the 36. In good field position. Lots of time. A minute 27. Ball, what, just on the 35. Syracuse 35. Dale, can you imagine a 20-yard return and your average goes down? I know. Look at that bobble. And then he just sees a little daylight on the outside. Good block out on the outside. And just by the jersey. Just by the jersey. Who was that? 53 for the Pirates. Bryant Picucci is in at fullback. Syracuse's third fullback of the first half. Number 36. He might be there for blocking. Or not. Graves, nice throw. Catch by Johnson. Antonio gets across midfield. He'll stop the clock first down. Minute 20 to go, and the clock is stopped. Now, Picucci's out now. He Car went out in the pattern. Gary Farrell is wide to the left. Antonio Johnson stays in. Richardson is the flanker. Clock runs with a minute 15. Graves back. Stepping up and going to Farrell on the comeback. Just short of the first down. Gary Farrell with a catch. Boy, Jones, just, just uh, short of Jones getting in there, too. 44 almost got in that play. No Ismail, no Hill. They got back on sides as Graves looks with 52 deep for Antonio Johnson. Touchdown! Yes. Touchdown catch, Antonio Johnson. <laughs> His second touchdown catch of the year. He's a little guy out of Detroit, and they had him going the whole way, and I didn't think he was going to be fast enough to beat Hall. That's Hall 40, and he just, nice, perfect throw. What can you say? Great catch. Syracuse, again, I don't know whether they're gonna, what they're doing. The timeout. They have a lead of 19 to 10. I think they're going to put a two-point play in here. Yeah, they were out there, but they're bringing them back. I don't know what the, uh, if they had a timeout. Obviously, there is a timeout. They did have one more remaining. Well, if you're in the secondary for East Carolina and you look and you say, Hill's not in, Ismail's not in, maybe I can relax a bit. Yeah, well, uh, Antonio Johnson was in, and uh, he beat 40 Hall, and it was just all the way. I, I really did not think that when he released that ball that Antonio was going to be able to get under it, but uh, he has turned into a sure-handed little receiver. He's probably got three grabs and two for touchdowns. Ismail was one of the first people downfield after the catch to congratulate him. And uh, he wasn't even on the field for that play. Now let's see if Syracuse can get it together here for a two-point conversion try. Earlier, they were lined up to get one, and they instead had to uh, go for one because of a delay of game. Melvin Tootin in. This is a little different look. Kikuchi is in. Yeah, Tootin in. Everybody's in except the kicker, so it won't be a two-point try. And now Biscop does come on. Well, now they got 22 seconds to pull this off, whatever it is. Well, after all of that, looks like they'll kick it. So much for our speculation. Biscop adds the 20th point. Tepper's flare after that. And Syracuse has a lead of 20 to 10. So indeed, Dale, they did get the ball back, and they did tack on seven extra points. That was important. Now they're going to be uh, saying, let's calm it down a little bit here, guys. They're going to try to talk to Coach P. I'm sure one of those officials is going to say, let's. John Reagan was involved, and we did hear the number 75 being shouted from the field. There were no penalty markers down. Reagan was hurt earlier in the game. 
Maybe he's trying to even things up. Well, I'll tell you what, I would not let him back in the game by letting Dion Johnson anywhere near the ball. Don't forget, we'll have the Coors Light halftime highlights. And we'll look back at some of the unusual plays from the first half of this season. There have been many. I think you'll enjoy that. Forty-seven seconds is a lot of time when you got a guy like Johnson back there. Let's see what uh, O'Neill can do with this ball. He's going deep, and Johnson has to go through his hands. And now he is coming out against the better advice of his teammate. Finally brought down. Sandquist got him on a, on a leg. Tim Shorehand Sandquist. Whoa, boy, that guy, doesn't he excite you when he takes off with the ball? And this one went through his hands into the end zone. He jumped up all 5'8 of them. If he's 5'8, I'm 6'3. Look, not, not, now they sell him. Stay in there, stay in there. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> but Van Buren would tackle him. Yeah. He had nice blocking up there. Ooh, that was a big haul. And as we come back, a screen over the middle. Actually, no screen. It's do it on your own. And it's Luke Fisher on that tight end drag with half a minute to go, 32 seconds. East Carolina is not content to run it out. Mitchell talking to the official. He says he's sick of getting held. They got Mitchell on the outside now on the bottom of the screen. 50 O'Rourke's in. Rooks Hawkins. Big rush. And yeah, they made him scramble. Heading to the sideline and out. Clock stops 22 seconds. And he's not going to hurt you if he's got to run with the ball at this point. So nice pressure from the up front four guys. And you see that nice statistic if you're a coach. 126 consecutive passes without an interception. It is 20 to 10 Syracuse. Throwing into coverage and the interception streak almost ended. And Sandquist almost had his first catch. Yeah, first I, I interception. Th I, I thought that almost might be complete. Who's that driver? Clayton Driver, watch. When I watch Sandquist is playing center field like he should, but watch. The ball bounces up in the air. That's the, where I thought they might be able to get the reception. Sandquist was retreating. When that ball's up there, I think you want to come up and make a play on that ball. You're supposed to stop and come under control. Uh, and that's when it, it popped up in the air like that. Driver might have been able to make a play and actually kind of dribbled down off the thigh pad. So, so Tim still looking for interception number one with 13 seconds to go. East Carolina has taken a timeout. 20 to 10, Syracuse. Next week, Syracuse in Pittsburgh. And that should be quite a game. We'll have it for you right here on Super Sports. It starts the Big East schedule, right? For Open Syracuse, date next yeah. week for East Carolina, and then they get Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh would like to tape of this game, wouldn't they? They'd kill two birds with one stone. Mitchell still talking to the official. I love this. Talking to him about being held, I'm sure. He is the ambassador of ambience. Out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's a good one. Kevin Mitchell. Only a sophomore. Oh, there. Intercepted by a oh, oh. and he dropped it. Matamora dropped it. I mean, this was right in the breadbasket. And he saw, you know what he saw? All that green down there and a couple of blue and orange jerseys and helmets in front of him. Tony Montemore, a guy who left Syracuse to transfer to Rhode Island when he wasn't playing much.
came back on his own, walked on, earned his scholarship back, and is now starting. And now it is fourth down and six with six seconds to go for East Carolina. I don't think they'll risk a punt. Will they put it in the air? I'm sure they will. What have they got to lose? The game will, the half will be over, I should say, on whatever happens. So they are just going to put it right up. Who they got out there? Number 82. Lake is now 9 of 17, 134 yards. And the trips to the right, Gallimore. Last play of the half, we think. They're going for six. Oh, that ball came out, and Gallimore almost had a play on it. So the first half comes to a close with Syracuse on top, 20 to 10. Back with the Coors Light halftime highlights right after these words. Halftime in the Carrier Dome and Syracuse has a lead of 20 to 10 on the East Carolina Pirates. But hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher. We told you at the start it wouldn't be easy. This team can move the football in East Carolina, but they kind of self-destructed with seven penalties in the first half. Lots of penalties, a couple of uncharacteristic turnovers. So indeed, uh, what they did right, they also did wrong. So uh, I I'm looking for them to rebound a little bit. Syracuse came on at the end. Let's check the Coors Light halftime highlights. One highlight you won't see is the 102-yard return of the dynamic Deion Johnson, but still after Syracuse and a pair of field goals, Clayton Driver's catch made it a 7-6 East Carolina lead. Nice play right in the corner of the end zone. Good timing pattern. Marcus Lee scoring the touchdown here for Syracuse on a burst up the middle. Nice job by Lee. They got a nice uh, block on Robert Jones, a linebacker from East Carolina. He has been very active defensively for the Pirates. And then in the final minute of the first half, Marvin Graves airs it out and goes deep, not to Hill, not to Ismail, but Antonio Johnson. Did a great job, just kept on his route, made an over-the-shoulder grab of a well-thrown pass. Which brings us now to the halftime statistics. Syracuse and East Carolina each over 200 yards of total offense. And is Syracuse, well, running the football a little bit better this week than they did against Florida State. Syracuse, no turnovers, but if we said they put the ball on the ground a couple times, it hasn't hurt them and hasn't really been fumbled, but uh, a little dangerous. And Syracuse, I'm sure, is talking about that at halftime. And so it is Syracuse leading it 20 to 10, and we'll be back with the third quarter kickoff when we return. Well, the theme coming into the game at the Carrier Dome today was Syracuse had to bounce back from last week's disappointing and lopsided loss against Florida State. Well, even within the first half, Syracuse had to bounce back. ECU had momentum in a couple of instances. The Orangemen, though, with a 10-point lead as we begin the second half. All right, thank you very much, Dan Horn, and we're set now. O'Neill's back to form by Pat O'Neill. Yeah, that's, that's what you wanted to see. East Carolina will begin their own 20-yard line. Hey, O'Neill gets a pat on the back from Ismail. Cadre saying that's the way to do it. They want to give him any field position. And they show that they don't mind throwing it up in the air. It is uh, first and ten now for East Carolina at their own 20-yard line. And it is Blake hit as he throws, and it is incomplete. The penalty marker is down in the secondary. Luke Fisher, the intended receiver. I don't know what the uh, penalty is going to be, but you're going to see Mitchell come through on a twist. Look at that center. battle. Yeah. Scott and Wentworth. Scott and Wentworth. That's going to be an illegal hit. So that's going to be what? Ten yards? Holding on the defense. Ten yards. Automatic first down. And so East Carolina picks up 10 yards up to the 30-yard line where it's first and 10. If you just joined us, East Carolina won the opening toss and deferred their option until the start of the second half. And Blake over the middle and a catch again by the tight end Fisher. Boy, chopping up big, great bunch, bunches of yardage there. Hard to say. They got him out. Watch Fisher, 91. He starts out right on the right. They pass him along. 
The linebacker's got to get on him. The safety not able to, right there, there's the safety, so the linebacker should have had him man for man, I would assume. And that time they threw it over all three linebackers, Lusardi, Young, and Chip Todd. Number 57 has replaced JoJo Wooden. East Carolina trails 20 to 10, but they're moving well to begin the second half. There's another catch, Hunter Gallimore, and he steps out. Dwayne Joseph on the coverage. Quick pass, long pass, but a quick pass over to Gallimore. Ismail and Graves warming up on the sideline. During halftime, we noticed the kickers and the punters for both teams were out practicing. Last time these two teams played here, it came down to the field goal of John Biscop to win it. We'll keep you up to date on those numbers. Johnson and Ismail, here's the draw play. Nice hit in the backfield. Wentworth got in there and he slowed the play down. Mitchell made the tackle. Wentworth helped him out. Absolutely right. Mitchell, the nose guard. Short. Going to be third. Maybe a half a yard loss. Now it is third down and two. And the offensive line signaling Deion Johnson that he's in the wrong spot. Now Hunter Gallimore goes the other way. They've only got four seconds to go, and they got to burn a timeout. So we've got a timeout with 13.43 to go. And Syracuse leads here in the third quarter, 20 to 10. It is third down and two. East Carolina has taken a timeout, and they still have more time to talk about it. Syracuse has Hawkins and Rooks, Mitchell, Wentworth up front, Chip Todd, Glenn Young, John Lissardi, the linebackers, and the four-man secondary. It's a 4-3 look. Now they bring a fifth man up and go to the 5-2 defensive alignment. There's an option. And it is Deion Johnson carrying it out of the backfield. He has the first down. Went to the option and got picked up a third down and short. And you see the man who was the runner, little Deion Johnson, take to the fullback, run right down. Now Todd takes Blake. And then there's nobody able to come up and make a play on Johnson until after he gets down that first down marker. Good yardage here for East Carolina. This is the opening drive of the second half, and here is Blake on the roll. And Blake on the completion of driver. And they're inside the Syracuse 25-yard line. Option left, curl in pattern right. They are running the ball and passing the ball very well. They started on their own 20. They're on the Syracuse 24, and they're going to measure to see if it's a first down. Blake comes in from Hunter Gallimore. Is he a little short? Very, very short. Oh, he puts a little card in there. Oh, first it is down, a first yeah. down. Yeah. Apparently it's just a... Card is the ultimate little uh, measuring device, apparently. Is it his credit card? Or? Yeah. Syracuse 20 and East Carolina 10. Rod Williams going wide out to the left. Young in a blitzing position, but he doesn't come. The fullback, Mitchell, is there. Syracuse has done a pretty good job in stopping the run game of East Carolina. Rhett with the ball. His brother, Eric Rhett, was here a few weeks ago playing for Florida. Dan Hoare down below. All right, Dave and Dale. Uh, JoJo Wooden definitely will not be in in the second half. In fact, he's been taken to the hospital to have an MRI, essentially an X-ray of the ligaments of his left knee. Whoa. Does not sound good, Dan. One yeah, you never set. know for sure, but they're certainly checking. Right. One back set and a quick pitch in the flat, and it's off the hands of Johnson. Deanna, on a pattern they've run a lot of curl, 
where he goes out and of course with his speed you have to give him that little cushion one of these days look like joseph might be ready to try to pick that one off but with a guy like that you're not going to make you're not going to be able to come back and do anything if you miss it so he's playing it cautiously out on the corner and now it is third down and nine big third down now for the defense Deion Johnson is up left at the top of the screen. That's Ron Williams in motion. And here comes Syracuse, but Blake, his time, incomplete. He was he open. Threw it behind Hunter Gallimore. Now the field goal team will come on. It's a pretty good poke. It'll be about a 40-yard attempt. With the angle slightly to the left. John Jett, the punter, does the holding. Syracuse has blocked the punt this year. I don't think they've blocked a field goal yet. And the kick is That's on good. the way, and it is good. And so, East Carolina back within a touchdown now of Syracuse at 20 to 13. Nice drive. They stalled out down there, but boy, they got lots of yardage going to the tight end, running the option, looking to Johnson. So Syracuse not able to keep him off the scoreboard, but they did stop the touchdown. Yeah, the young and the restless there in the front row. And the loud. <laughs> what is that mascot? That's a pirate. Oh, it is. Oh, there you See? go. Yeah. There you go. And orange pants on, I wasn't sure. So now East Carolina taking the second half kickoff and putting three points on the board. Next week, Syracuse at Pittsburgh. Paul Pasqualoni with conversation with one of the officials on the sideline as the Orange men await this kickoff. Might be his first game of the dome. Yeah, I would say he hasn't had too many opportunities to keep his dad's finger. And now we'll see if Ismail can get a shot at it. Yeah, this is this has been an interesting this kick kickoff game for both teams has been interesting. Look at the numbers Johnson has put up. Ismail held in check to this point. And don't forget, you got to take 102 away from Johnson. And here's a fake reverse to Dardar. It's Richardson on the return. I'll check and see if Grandison is back in. He was the guy that they went down after that. Uh, Pile was crunched for East Carolina. He's back. Number five is back in there. So Grandison is all right. Back in a safety spot. Is and Hill are the wideouts. They were not in the game when Antonio Johnson caught his 40-yard touchdown pass near the end of the first half. Pitch back to Walker. Student body right. Oh, he knocked out Wooten right over. He just barreled into the fullback who was out on a lead block situation and knocked him about three yards back. There's Walker and the fullback is a lead, but just a little toss sweep. Watch. Boom. <laughs> Knocks his own fullback who was blocking on Carter. What penalty? I guess I missed. And they're going to be walking when we come back. On the offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Boy, they've, now they've started to rack up some penalties. Syracuse gets a holding call. So it's going to be, what, uh, first and about almost 18. From the 21-yard line. Option look by Graves. Pitch back to Walker. Keeps his balance and gets up to the 25. Great play by Walker. Oh, 
And we have an injured man down. Is Dave Walker is down. Trying to get a block on Dylan right there, and there's the extra drive. David Walker is down. He gives it 100% and then some on every play he's involved in. It has been a costly game to this point for Syracuse. Well, yeah, Wooden's down. Uh, they lost Reagan momentarily. There's the leap. Ooh, he landed right on his foot. I don't know. Let's see what happened. Oh, he's still, still going ahead right there. I don't know. That didn't look... Not I a good-looking sight now as David Walker is being carried off the field. It's I, his left leg. I think it happened when he, when he came down on it, when he made the initial jump. And so Walker, boy, that is tough. And now it is Al Wooten and Terry Richardson, the running backs. Braves flares Richardson out, but he goes upfield. There's the catch by Gibney. First down. Nice protection. They talk. In the papers this week, that Gedney had become somewhat of a forgotten man. Had not caught many balls this year as he did last year, and they've gone to him a couple times so far today. That was a big catch. And now Syracuse operates just outside of their own 40-yard line. Shelby Hill has caught one pass today. Gedney has a couple now. Ismail is three and Johnson two. And Marvin has time. Off his hands, intercepted. Shelly Hill comes back to make the tackle of Jerry Dillon. Off the hands of Tari Ismail. And the interception on a pretty good ball thrown there by Marvin Graves. Now there's a lot of zip on it. He had great protection. Lots of time to survey the field. And... You see the ball bounced off of Ismail, a little bit in back of him, and Dylan tries to straight arm Wooden, and they finally bring him down. Wooden brings him down. That's a and, tough break. And Dylan has his first interception of the year to go along with one fumble recovery. Now East Carolina has the ball. They can tie. The reverse to Johnson. Trying to outrun Rooks. He's got room upfield. And he is down to the 35-yard line, a gain of nearly 10 on the play. Now that wasn't fair, that <laughs> with Rooks. Rooks is pretty quick for a big guy. Oh, they're checking Walker out, checking his knee. Watch Rooks. <laughs> there it is right there. This is the whoops. Turns on those afterburners, makes it around the corner. Walker is walking on the sideline as you watch Johnson flying. John Walker appears to be okay. And here is Blake, under pressure from Mitchell, incomplete, intended for Dion. And I, 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 he did get held on that play. I was watching Mitchell. You're looking at Blake now, but they've got hands up all over him, and he is complaining. As he starts to go by people, they're getting up on him. Well, Bill Lewis, the coach of East Carolina, talking this week, said the big change, of course, in college football, they allow you to use your hands. They allow you to hold. That's yep. why the offenses are now so far ahead of the defenses. Syracuse is doing better in the sack department today. An old power eye. And they use it. New ball carrier in the game. Sanquist makes the tackle. They ran an old power eye. Damon Wilson and, was the ball carrier. And he got hit hard by Sanquist, and now he's down. He got it in the lower shin, as you can see. His first and only carry of the game, and he paid the price. Wilson, watch it. Let's see right there. There's the helmet right on the shin and the twist to boot. Tim Sanquist's helmet hit him in the shin. Syracuse 20, East Carolina 13. Nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Carolina driving for the tying or maybe go-ahead score. Now Syracuse, that turnover, boy, they do kill you. And he's in a lot of pain.
Meanwhile, on the Syracuse bench, David Walker looks like he's feeling quite a bit better than he was a couple of minutes ago. And Damon Wilson is hurting. There's Walker with Team Ducker and Surgeon Bruce Baker. East Carolina with the first and ten. There's Ron Williams motioning. Here comes Lissardi. Got into the backfield, breaking up the play. And it is a case there of, was that Rooks trying to tackle the ball? Yeah, they're trying to get the ball out. Van Buren actually kind of rushed, pushed backwards by Lissardi. John came off the line of scrimmage and broke up this player, nearly stopped him. There's the toss to Van Buren, see him inside, so he had to worry a little bit about it. it looked like they were going to fake the reverse or have him think a little bit about it. Now he tries to cut up inside. Rooks took the outside away and uh, tried to also take the ball. Driver goes left, Deion Johnson right. Cedric Van Buren is the lone back right now as Williams is in motion. Into the flat, there is Ron Williams. Sandquist brings him down. Well, that is well executed. Rooks was almost up into it, but uh, they passed up over him and another first down. Kevin Mitchell was out of that play. O'Rourke had replaced him. Now they flip-flop. O'Rourke heads to the bench. Syracuse unable to get to Blake. They have been, you're right. Of late. And it is first and ten, East Carolina at the 14-yard line. Short side. Well, Mitchell missed a tackle. Had him in the, had him in the hole. Missed the tackle. Junior Smith on his first carry. East Carolina has two offensive coordinators, a pass coordinator and a run coordinator. That's interesting. Who calls the plays? The pass man is upstairs. The run coordinator on the bench. Same ball carrier, Junior Smith, jitterbugging his way down close to the five-yard line. East Carolina dominating the possession here in the third quarter. Now that turnover, that intercepted deflection killed Syracuse. And look at the hole. They're getting good blocking downfield. McCollop, one of the offensive guards, 72 is down there. They're threatening to score. Manamora out of the game. A fake and a toss to the end zone. And two receivers in the same vicinity. And it was intended for Cedric Van Buren, but Luke Fisher was there as well. That should have been an easy touchdown. They had two players and only one defender. But they, they, they fake the up and over. Watch there. Oh, there's the fake. And now he drops straight back. And watch. Almost like a screen pass. I mean, like a screen play where they did not let the defensive man get there. But there were two receivers there. You're right. And so a costly miss. And now East Carolina is going to have to go for three. There was only one defender back against two East Carolina potential receivers. Did he miss it? He did. Now there's a break. Anthony Brenner misses it from close range. And Syracuse dodges a big bullet. They're quite fortunate after that deflected interception that they did not give anything up. They're going to get the ball on the 20. Let's see what they do offensively. They're not like to throw the ball. They're up by seven. Let's get down and get another touchdown, and that will give us not any breathing room with this group, but it'll give us a little bit of room. John Nilsson in at the left guard spot. And they get back in time, apparently so. No flag on the play. Carter 80 made the move across, but got back in time and lead. Carries for about two, three. Richardson, the tailback. Marcus Lee, the fullback. Hill and Ismail, the wideouts. Braves 
Reese looks to the left, and he has a catch by Ismail. Brought down quickly on the play by Wright. 32 right there, and Ismail says, that's the way. Let's take him a little bit at a time here, guys. We almost got a first down. Let's just keep chipping away. We don't need the big play. Let's take some time off the clock, too. Here comes the short yardage team in. Kevin Barker, the extra tight end. David Walker is back in the backfield with Richardson and Wooten. David Walker has it. He's oh, he's short. And right there was Robert Jones and company to bring him down shy of the first down. Eric Myers helping out as well. Well, that's tough when you can't get the first down like that. There's the penetration. And now Pat O'Neill has to come on and punt. Pretty good group of linebackers. Myers there, and the defense has got to come right back out again. Three plays and punt. Matt Greco, the long snapper, and Deion Johnson is back. A little low. Nice Beautiful punt. booming punt by O'Neill. Johnson at the 28. He's surrounded, and he's brought down. Reggie Terry down on the coverage, and Syracuse clings to a seven-point lead with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Back with you with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Dave Cohen, Dale Drypolcher, Dan Horde, Blake. Markers are down. He completes it over the middle to Deion Johnson. This one could be coming back. Johnson's up to midfield. And they got to Blake right after he got rid of the ball, but he snaps right up. Going to be a procedure call. Let's see. That it is. So he goes yards away from Deion Johnson. Yeah, he's the kind of guy, you know, when you're a defensive player and you see a little guy like that, you really want to hit him hard. I mean, you really want to hit him hard. But he bounces right back up, and he has, he has been a very, very integral part of the offense. Second time in a game, East Carolina did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they didn't. The guy slips back in that backfield. He's not up on the line of scrimmage, and that is a procedure. is first down and 15. He stumbles, does Blake. Now he's going deep, hanging it up, and it is out of bounds. Intended for Deion Johnson. That's a let's get Deion open play. And he just, uh, Joseph right with him. Blake comes in with Hunter Gallimore, number 82. Blake out of the one-back set. Mitchell coming up the middle. And he forced a quick toss. That was behind Hunter Gallimore. Mitchell's going <laughs> to give him an airful. Yeah, he's just being pleasant today. But he has been putting the pressure on. He is some pass rusher. Right there, he's just going to get him. And just, you know, he hurried that enough to where he could not lead him. And the ball was behind him. Exactly. Now, this is a big... Syracuse has had some problems stopping him on third down. This is a big one. Tony Jones is in. And the catch is made by Dion for a first down at the 47-yard line. Lots of time. They couldn't put... That was a big drop by... Blake. Watch. Watch Blake. Three, four, five. Now he keeps going. Now he's going left. Whoa. He re look at the spiral on that ball. Perfect pass. As they brought him all the way, they brought Deion in all the way from the, Deion Johnson from the sideline all the way in. And However, there is a penalty marker down. Is that again. right? Let's 
see what this is. This a hold or what? on Syracuse. Yeah. Defensive holding. They will turn down the penalty. Decline it. Well, they have been giving up some third downs today. Oh, and motion by the right move. tackle. 77, Nick Wilson jumped, he flinched, and it was spotted, and we have yet another yellow flag. I think it's from the wave. He got, got caught up in the wave. A lot of noise in here. In fact, the noise is it's been, Dave, since the game started, and Wilson went early. Watch him go. Watch 77. Yep. Now it is first down at 15. Blake puts it up. Fisher can't hold on. Pretty good play as they got the tight end down the seam. Yep. Headed right down there. They just not able to hook up with him. Now it becomes second down and 15. It seems to me like East Carolina has had the ball for this entire third quarter. Yeah, you know, you, you see all that uh, purple and white always seem to be running with the ball. Nice catch downfield. Clayton Driver, I believe, backing up, and he held on. The man who had the touchdown catch in the first half. And East Carolina now inside Syracuse territory. These guys are getting tired of chasing this quarterback. Watch him step up right in front of O'Rourke, and he takes a little bit off it. Perfect pass, and driver, just a real nice catch. Sandquist applied the hit as driver was falling down. Big catch by Clayton Driver. They got to get Brooks. Rooks got to get a blow here. They've had, they're chasing this kid all over the carpet, and uh, they've got uh, Spencer in now. And they run that deep draw, and Cedric Van Duren is brought down by Spencer. That's his second fine play of the game. That's right, and uh, he's in there in relief of Rooks, I think. Uh, he's a big kid, 6'6", 255, and he's going to come right. Watch him. Watch split. See that? Now, that's what a fresh guy can give you. You know, when you're tired, it's hard to break that double team, and he just shot right between two offensive linemen for a big play. Has he earned another play? He has. Ernie Davis Brown in there as well. On uh, second down and 13, there goes Van Buren. A lot of time for Blake. Poor pass. Behind Driver. And now a big third down coming up. As we said, got the third, have to check the third down conversions for uh, East Carolina. We'll get that for you in a second, but they have been successful on third downs. And when they get down inside the 20, they've stalled a couple times. There you go, six out of eight. And again, against Syracuse this year, well over 40% the opposition. The crowd is playing like the 12th man on defense. Tony Jones from the outside, passes incomplete off the hands of Hunter Gallimore. They had a safety blitz by Tony Jones. And now they'll send the field goal team on again. Jones, 18, you're going to see him enter the picture. It's a straight drop. Whoa! He sees somebody coming. He may have to pull it down, so you got to give Jones a little credit. He threw way off of uh, off balance. He found the right man. Gallimore was pretty free in the secondary, but incomplete. Now a 51-yard attempt coming up for Anthony Brenner. This would break his career best by a yard. Got a shot. It is good. 51 yards by Anthony Brenner. And you ask yourself, how did he make that one and miss the last one? Yeah, it's it's the timing. It's the simpatico between he and the holder, I guess. And uh, he got that one. And he made it with a lot to spare. There you go. 20 to 16, Anthony Brenner. How important are special teams and kickers? Well, you're going to see right there that uh, that has kept them in the game. He missed one, came back and kicked another. 
And that does mean, however, that perhaps Ismail will get a shot. Well, I'll tell you, they've got to generate some offense, and they cannot put the defense back in again. Danny, what's going on down there, big guy? Perhaps one good thing did come out of the field goal for East Carolina, and that is Syracuse's crowd is definitely finally into the game. The Orange crowd is booing Syracuse when it failed to get the first down on that third and short situation. Now the crowd is pounding on the seats. It's into the game, and sometimes it takes a close game getting close to the fourth quarter to really bring the fans to life. Better late than never, I guess, but I guess you're right, so. Danny. Almost all three quarters. Yeah, well, we talk about it. We talk about the lack of atmosphere at the start of this game being similar to what it was prior to Vanderbilt, but now they're up and howling. Twenty to sixteen, two forty-nine to go, third quarter. This one is a long way from being over. Absolutely, and let's see what Brunner does with this. I, I'd like to see Syracuse get a little more on this kickoff. Richardson took the last one, take the reverse to Dardar. A lot of height. Ismail wants it, but it's going to be Picucci in the middle of the field. Now you generally don't want the fullback running the ball. But uh, he got it. Decent field position, certainly more than the 20. About the 26. Antonio Johnson will be in at a wide receiver on this series. Ismail stays in. Marvin Graves will quarterback. I don't think they wanted Pacucci to handle that one. In fact, I know they didn't. Ismail had a running start, was trying to get there. Gedney is flanked to the right. Gedney has been open a couple times. He's had a couple of big catches. Grave stumbling a bit on the option. His pitch, even with Walker, it's not going for much. Grandison takes Walker out of bounds. He pleads innocent. Took him into those pads on the wall that were Joe put Morris. up after <laughs> Joe Morris suffered a broken collarbone in the Northwestern game. Joe Morris Memorial padding. Great stumble as he pulled out from center on that short side option. Now, now they're, they're in trouble again. It's second and long. Second and more than 10. So it really puts a lot of pressure on them. I think that they cannot just keep turning that ball back over to East Carolina. Second down now and 11. Marvin on a dump off to Walker. Hard earned yards. Jerry Dillon first to get him. Still going to be third and long. It's going to bring up third down and six. Wooten is out. Time for a screen pass? I was thinking that, but uh, we'll see. Now Graves goes upfield to Ismail. He makes a great move. And another. He's on his way. One man to beat. Oh, and they knock him out of bounds. Graveson for the neck tackle of Padre Ismail, who's hurt. Ismail hurt on the sideline. Looks like his left leg. Maybe he is a game breaker. Let's see. Graves drops straight back. He's looking for Ismail the whole way because he knows it's Cushion City out there. Now he's got to get the first down. He turns in. He's quick. Yeah, he is. We're talking fast. Shelby Hill in the game now, replacing Ismail and Antonio Johnson out to the right. Minute 41 to go, third quarter. The pitch back to Walker. Oh. The Energizer keeps going. I like that. It's like that little rabbit, that little guy that comes in beating the drum. <laughs> and you notice now, Dale, uh, how Syracuse has gotten away from the option stuff to Walker. They just want to get him that pitch and let him go. Give him the ball, let him find a hole, and, and let him be tough. And that's it right there. He's not going to get out of the way. Just keeps knocking people over. You see him bounce off an East Carolina player. 
a good drive for Syracuse. The old Southern Cal tailback toss. Body, student body left and right. Ismail back in. Will Graves roll right? No, he gives it to the fullback. Well, this is the time you got to tell your offensive lineman, guys, if you ever did any blocking before, you got to do it now. And you know, they have kept Jones. We have not called his number as much in this quarter as we did, of course, in the second. East Carolina has had the ball a lot, Dave. Barker comes in, second tight end. Antonio Johnson goes out on second down and eight. It's the first time they've used this formation. Two tight ends, only one wide out. Ismail has man-to-man -man coverage. They give it to Walker on that counterplay. Uh, Jones was waiting right there for him. 44. Waiting for that. His responsibility is not to vacate, and he did not vacate. Richardson goes in, Wooten goes out, Johnson goes in, Parker goes out. Third down again. Let's check on Syracuse's third they down. They won't get another play away before the third quarter comes to an end. Yeah. And Syracuse will begin the fourth quarter, leading East Carolina 20-16. to 16. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolcher and Dan Hoare. The fourth quarter is about to begin. Syracuse leads East Carolina 20-16. to 16. Quite obviously, they want to get a touchdown and have more than a seven or an eight-point lead. Right, and they've got a big third down. Set the ball. It is going to be third down and eight from just inside the 10-yard line, so obviously they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. they got to get down to the three. They shift Richardson out to the flanker and move Gedney to the tight end right. Backside pressure against Graves. Can he get the pass away? He does. Over the head of Richardson. Well, it looks like Biscop is going to be uh, called in again as uh, Syracuse is unable to convert a third down. John Biscop coming on now to attempt another field goal. He's hit from 19 and 48. This one will be 27 yards. This is a tougher angle for a right-footed kicker. From the left hash mark. No oh, good. And precisely the same spot that Brennan missed earlier for East Carolina. Same results. They missed the left upright. And so the score remains 20 to 16. They didn't get the seven or the eight or the three. East so, Carolina gets it back. Took a little time off the clock, let the defense get out there, but boy, this is a uh, difficult situation. Trips to the left. Watch the left tackle. He's the 340-pounder. Catch by Gallimore, or was he out of bounds? Yep, he was in. He was in, it's a good catch. We're in the opening moments of the fourth quarter, and... Here's a look at what's happened through three quarters. Now Gallimore on second down and five. It's a fake. And Blake converts to Luke Fisher, breaks the tackle of Reggie uh, Chip Todd, and it's a first down for East Carolina. Carolina. 
East Carolina continuing to pick up first downs. They begin this play from the 32-yard line. On the draw play, Junior Smith, short yardage. Brooks brings him down. Twice in the game, East Carolina has been penalized for not having seven men on the line of scrimmage, and sometimes they're very close to uh, incurring that kind of flag again. Well, that's Scott is big. I've been checking him out the binoculars as we look at Coach Pascaloni. He is a big load, that left tackle. Pascaloni watching as Blake throws. He's got Fisher in a crowd. The gang tackle, but he's up to the 40-yard line. That defense for Syracuse, I think, is beginning to tire. They've been on the field a long time in the second half. Some of the players slow getting up. Yep. But that's one of the things you're home. You got a lot of time left. You got to do it. The offense is not helping you out. Williams is the motion man. Pressure this time, but he gets it away. And there's Gallimore with a catch. And Sandquist with the sure hands brings him down. Well, this is the exact thing that they have done all game and then gotten down and had to kick a field goal. They've got 16 points, but they have not been able to convert but one touchdown. There's the pass over the middle. And the sure hit, as you said, by Sandquist, but good yardage. Brennan has three field goals in the game. There's that play-action fake carried out nicely by Blake. Buying himself time, now he's going to run it. And he's got room to run. Still going inside the 10, and he is going to go in for the touchdown. A 43-yard scramble by the man you call the me, Major Harris. Well, he showed why right there. East Carolina takes the lead. It is 22 to 20 East Carolina with the extra point to come. Now you think about the missed field goal and the missed opportunities. Well, you always do. You always think about those things. Now it doesn't do any good, though. That was then. This is now. you got to come up with some points. 23 to 20. East Carolina is back on top. We have 12.45 remaining in the game, and East Carolina leads by three. East Carolina 23, and Syracuse 20. And a penalty flag way down on the left, to our left, as you look at the field now. Personal foul on the defense, 15 yards, they administered on the kickoff. Extra point was good. And so, Syracuse penalized. And here is the run of Jeff Blake. They said it was like a mini Major Harrison. Watch him. He just saw a clear field, and he just took off and sprinted down that left sideline. He's just going to get in. Joseph can't get off the block. Musardi not able to stop him. And there's the move on Sanquist. Sanquist gets a leg, but not before he just reaches inside the pylon. Incidentally, Dave, Syracuse, two of six on third down conversions, while uh, East Carolina, six of eight. And I think Syracuse needs a big play. And they're down by three. They have lots of time to go in this game. But they have received their wake-up call. Now, they can't just have three plays and have the defense go back out there again. This time they'll kick it deep and into the bay. Well, that wasn't uh, with a 15-yard penalty. That wasn't uh, unexpected. And now, as uh, Brennan drives off, Brenner, Syracuse will begin at their own 20-yard line. Ball right on the 20. And there's the man who's got to pull the trigger and get this offense back in gear. Penalty 
He's adding up 16 total penalties. Shelby Hill and Antonio Johnson to the left. Braves on the draw play to Terry Richardson. He runs in to a host of white-shirted Pirates after a very short game. They have not been able to break that. They have not been able to get past the defensive line. They have not really been able consistently to get that running game going. There's a concern Syracuse sideline at this point. Down only by three, but momentum, Dave, has to be in that ECU side of the field. Here's the option, a little pop pass, and the catch by Shelby Hill. Syracuse gets a first down out of it. Wasn't a particularly pretty play, but effective, as Shelby Hill has his second catch. Dan Horn. All right, Dave, you talked about the atmosphere on the Syracuse bench. It's interesting what's being said by the coaches to the players right now. The theme is stay together. Don't blame each other for what's taken place to this point. Stick together, play hard, still plenty of time to go, and certainly plenty of time to pull this out despite falling behind by three. It was a game in which uh, East Carolina won the opening toss and elected to give the ball to Syracuse. They stopped Syracuse the first time. When East Carolina got it to begin the second half, they came up with a field goal. Here's the fullback, Marcus Lee. Lee uh, bangs out for a couple, two or three. Now it'll bring up, as you said, Dale, second down and five. It'll be interesting to see if Syracuse drives the ball down into scoring position late in this game, down by three, whether they would go for the tie or go for the win, but that's a long ways away from consideration. Braves on the run, throws it upfield to Marcus Lee, gets a block from Shelby Hill, and Marcus Lee takes it down to the 41-yard line. Pretty play for the fullback out of Massachusetts, coming out of the backfield. Well conceived, took a little long, but they got blocking. Watch Richardson, there's the block, that really helped. And then Nilsson out, got in Carter's face, nice grab, watch the ball all the way into those gloved hands, and then look at the speed on the fullback. He's got power, he's got speed, and he can catch the ball. Marcus Lee with a catch, Graves has it on 15 of 18 now. He's over 200 yards by our count. Here's the option coming, and Richardson on the short side option down the sideline. Now Syracuse getting their offense in gear. They will mark it one yard shy of the first down. Second down and one. Bill Lewis is trying to come up with the biggest uh, coaching victory of his career at East Carolina. Two teams that are four and one. Get the first down is what they want to do. Major bowl aspirations on the line. Marcus Lee gets the first down. Yeah, just, just keep it going, guys, is what they're saying. We don't want to get back in that third and 11. We don't want to try something on first down that we lose two or three yards. Now we end up with that second and 13, and then gain six, and it's third and seven, and we're in trouble again. Just keep moving the sticks. And this drive allowing the defense to uh, catch a second wind and maybe tire East Carolina out a little bit. 23-20, East Carolina leading. Johnson lined up on the wrong side. Shelby Hill set him straight. Here's Marvin stepping back and firing. Getney with a catch. All the way down to the sixth. Nice play by Gedney. Watch Gedney. He has to really come back for this. In other words, this ball's behind him. They have all the motion left. It's a little bit of a throwback. Watch Gedney. Whoa! Nice job. And he heads downfield while Grandison comes over to help make the stop. The linebackers get there. 
And so Syracuse spreading the ball around now to a variety of receivers in the game. Had catches by Ismail and Hill and Gedney and Johnson and Farrell. Richardson on that counterplay brought down by Dillon. Zion Kumala is in the game as well. Yeah, he's a nose guard. He's one at uh, two plays ago dumped on the Gedney reception. He dumped Marvin Graves. He's in right there. There's 50. He was a runner-up, I believe, one of the considered the junior college player of the year. He's a nose guard. He's been hurt, and they've got him in. Second down and six. Syracuse has to get into the end zone. Straight drop, quarterback draw. He is hit, and he's brought down. They had that play diagnosed. And they were ready for that, no doubt about it. They have had trouble running up the middle on this group of East Carolina Pirates. Watch. The idea is, of course, is you drop back is to have it open up wide. But you know who was in there? Jones was in there. He came right up the alley where he might have gone, and that really precluded any kind of quarterback draw. And Kumalai came on the other side of the center, so now it is third down and ten. Ooh, another third down. Walker told Richardson to get out on the flank. Braves under pressure. Giving ground, he's sacked. A huge sack. Back to the 25-yard line, and now it makes it a 42-yard field goal. Kumalai, watch number 50. And Cardell, number four, uh, 59, are the guys that are in there. And Carter... Dale Syracuse shifted to a one-back offense and then set that one back out into the pattern. There was nobody to help. Nobody. Now Biscuit looks to tie the game. He's not going to tie it here. John Biscuit has missed consecutive field goals, and it stays 23 to 20. 6:48. I would have to say, in reading the papers, Associated Press said Syracuse will win this one, but it'll be a squeaker, and it is a squeaker. Watch Graves; he just had nowhere to go. And now the defense can no longer just play defense. They got to turn it over. They've got to get the ball away from these guys. Now the crowd, which hasn't been happy with the offense, is trying to get behind the D, and they want to keep it on the ground, no doubt. David Daniels up the middle. Young gets him right there. East Carolina in the driver's seat. Every time they run a play, they can count on oh, 30 to 45 seconds going off the clock. See, they're up to the line of scrimmage much too quickly now. They've got 15 seconds on the play clock. They got the play underway with 10 seconds to go. And here's Johnson dropping it in the flat. They got some pressure, they blitzing, they got to blitz just about everybody now. And you're going to see the pass to the Johnson, yeah. Now this reminds me of the sequence last year in Syracuse Avenue on Pittsburgh. They ran that play much too quickly and then they threw the ball and the clock stopped. So instead of killing off another minute, yeah, they've only taken it about 10 seconds. And now they're forced to throw on third down. And the catch is made by Gallimore. He gets a block from Johnson. Joseph, the only man who can stop him. And a nice cut back by Gallimore. And Joseph wrestles him down. But we have a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's going to be a hold. Woo! Two Syracuse guys collided. And I didn't know what happened. I looked up, and there was the flag right there. Watch. Oh, yeah, there was a hold. 72. 
That was McCallop. He really was holding. Another big play coming back for East Carolina. If they come out of here with a loss, they will be moaning these penalties that have killed big, big plays. What, there they are. There's, uh, was it Jones and Sandquist, I believe. And I'll tell you what, Joseph did a great Holy job of getting off the block and coming down to make the play. That was a 55-yard play that is coming back. And there's still almost six minutes left. Well, I tell you, this is it. Third down at 25. Johnson with a catch, it's good for a first down. Deion Johnson with another third down conversion against Syracuse. The catch of the game as they climbed out of the deep hole. Boy, they were really deep. Deion Johnson. He's just rolling and look at this kid can really throw the ball while he is running. And he just hits Deion Johnson who is roaming around and able to get up and make the grab. When you convert a play like that, you almost deserve to win. Five and a half minutes to go. What a catch. Three men around him on the scramble. Now David Daniels, Garland Hawkins, stops his progress. Well, you know, you look back and... You say, Syracuse just not able to crank up the offense when they needed to. Put some pressure on the defense again. Scored 20 points. This skip is what, this two field goals. Well, he won a game for Syracuse against East Carolina. Last time they were here. Nearly intercepted, but taken by Fisher. Uh, you know you're in trouble when that happens. Off the hands of Glenn Young, and Fisher pulls it down for a first down catch. It bounced through Glenn Young's hands and into Fisher. Watch. Young out on the coverage, right through his hands. As Fisher is there. One-handed catch by Fisher. You know things aren't going right. Fisher coming up with his sixth catch. Blake is closing in on the 300-yard passing game. The pitch back, the fake reverse. Brooks almost overran him, but Mitchell got him. Black is running with four minutes and five seconds to go. Big loss. They got time. Chip Todd and Ernie Brown coming out. Now, if I'm East Carolina, despite the fact it's second and 17, I'll run the ball here. Let that time go off the clock and then throw it on third down if you have to. Well, they got 10 seconds on the 25-second clock. And the catch is made shy of the first down. Uh, Fisher makes the grab. But Blake is able to get that ball in there, isn't he? Three and a half minutes to go. Short of the first. Here's where Syracuse has to stop them. And they have converted on those third downs. They checked once. They were six of eight. And that's a big one down at the goal line moments ago. This is it. Third down and eight. in the backfield. Incomplete. They took a gamble with nobody in the backfield and Blake, under the gun, threw short. He has thrown 43 times for 325 yards. 23 completions. We said he uh, likes to throw the football. John Jett Set his record right here in the Dome against Syracuse. Shelby Hill is back. Jets should be able to put this one in the end zone if he wants to. 
Uh, he'd like to put it on the one yard line. Nose up, and Hill's Good. going in. The tr that's going into the end zone. Make it, and it is into the end zone. And Syracuse will have two minutes and 48 seconds, 80 yards to go to pull this game out. East Carolina 23, Syracuse 20. We'll be right back. Because a healthy body gives you the strength, flexibility, and endurance to keep you in the game. So treat your body to a regular program of physical... A lot to uh, the backs in general. Wondering if they haven't uh, contemplated to send an Antonio on a streak. He's not in the game, however. Heavy is in the slot on the right side. The backs are split. Marvin Graves on second down. Graves is hit, and the ball comes loose. It may be a touchdown. It's ruled dead, and a penalty marker is down as well. Holding. Got to be a hold. A penalty marker is down. East Carolina putting the pressure on Marvin Graves. Illegal use of hands on the offense. Hands. That's Kumalai, 50. He's the guy that comes in. Do they call that a pass? I think they said he was down. It's going to be a half the distance walk off. They got to get to over the 30 for a first down. Legal use of hands on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. What did Max say? It's a short trip from what, the penthouse to the house house? You always get to say that's a tough situation for these kids to be in. They got 236. They got to pull it out and put themselves back in the penthouse. Bobby Bowden said that Halo can become a noose yeah. by traveling only a foot. Now they're 95 yards away with two and a half minutes to go. Was their contact made? Graves his time. Over the middle, Shelby Hill. Try the first, first down. down. Yes, it is. <laughs> Big catch by Shelby, though, and Sergi is going to go without a huddle at 2:23 to go. Third down. Walker is on the wing left. They need him three yards. Stand-up start by the interior lineman. Marvin gets it away, and a catch by Ismail. He was thinking about yeah. lateraling it to Walker just to get him out of bounds. Block stops at 2:06. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about going for a tying field goal, do we? Nah. 2.06. The Orange been trying to pull one out. A set of four downs. And Graves getting time now. Throws off the hands of Hill. It's intercepted. But a marker is down in the secondary to return down the sideline for a touchdown. There's a penalty marker down as Chris Hall took it into the end zone. Are they going to bring this one back? They're talking interference. Shelby Hill is down on a knee. The officials are conferring. What is the call? <laughs> this is, uh, they're really making this one last. Fans will either be very happy or very sad when we hear this announcement. They're walking. On the defense. Oh, you talk about dodging the ball. How many times can you do that? Let's see this. Ooh. I don't even know. I don't even know if that was a I didn't even know if that was a reception. Yeah, if it hit the ground, yeah, it would be an interception. I, I don't think so. And I'm, you know, that was a quick look. It looked like a, it did hit the carpet, so. In any event, East Carolina has had a 102-yard kickoff return call back. That interception call back. Holding on the defense on an eligible pass receiver. Ten yards, automatic first down. And now Syracuse, in a minute 57, is 55 yards away. Whoa! <laughs> This is something. Let's see who's in here. We got Shelby Hills in and Cadre's in at the wideouts. We need some protection in the backfield. Walker in there. 
Marvin Graves has thrown 22 times. He may come out of this with a career high passing wise, but he'll settle for the win. They protect well. And there's Gedney. You know, well, he, he lost the ball for a second and got it back. And they're down to the East Carolina 41 yard line with a minute and 49 to go. Again, the chains stop the clock. I could hear people in front of me yelling, Gedney's open, Gedney's open. Gedney with four catches, good for 60 yards. Can Syracuse do it? Graves gets time. Maybe too much time. Ismail calls for it. Oh! Can't hold on, and he takes a big hit. Kind of a semi-big hit. Ismail was scrambling and called for it. They were running out of territory. He was scrambling right. Ismail was scrambling his pattern also as he had to had to move out of his original pattern. See, Marvin had started back the other way and just not able to put it where he could make a good play on the ball. Second and ten. To this point, East Carolina has kept Ismail out of the end zone. They don't need to get all ten on each play. Nope. Marvin sends everybody out. Walker made the catch, and he's knocked down nicely by Floyd. Yep, he's going to pick up only about three. So now they got to get the first down. they got third and about seven and a half. 120 and counting. No, Grace time takes out. takes a timeout. Pretty wise time to take a timeout with third down and eight coming up. They need to keep the drive alive. And we'll check on the third down conversions for Syracuse to this point. Next week, Syracuse at Pittsburgh. East Carolina can let it all hang out. They've got an open week. Yeah. Not that they've been holding back at all to this point. Third down conversion department. Syracuse only three of seven. East Carolina, six of eight. Marvin Graves gets a little bit of uh, refreshment. Ismail has caught six passes in this game. Gedney has caught four. Hill, three. Antonio Johnson, David Walker, two. Now they got to get the ball to the 31-yard line for a first down. They're obviously in four-down territory. Ismail six receptions ties his career best against Maryland. I don't know how many timeouts they got left. I believe they have two left. Okay. Because that would certainly uh, dictate whether you get the first down or not, whether you're going to get a timeout. Right now, this game, the difference between a shot at a major bowl and one in the lesser category. Syracuse at 4-1, and one, as is East Carolina. Third oh, down and eight. And every Braves fell. He fell. And now it's going to be fourth down and long, nearly 20. Time out, time out. Marvin stumbled. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And about 17 yards. They got to get to the 31-yard line. The ball is on the, what, 48. Watch. He just just tripped yep. over. Was it his foot? Yep. He got his yeah, feet crossed. His feet. Now huddle around Kevin Rogers, Paul Pasqualoni, Bob Casulo. Syracuse has to get down to the 31-yard line of East Carolina. You know, if you had to pick anything, it would be third down. Syracuse really has had some trouble. Three of seven isn't awful, but they have had some problems, I think, producing when they had to. And the offense turning the ball over and uh, or having to kick and putting the defense back on the field. But you know, it'll all be forgotten if they come up with a first down. No points in this second half. touchdowns for 
Syracuse since the second half of the Tulane game. Ten quarters, three touchdowns. It is all down to this, fourth down and 17. And a blitz. Way back to his old 20-yard line is Graves. What's he going to do? He's going deep. And on the comeback, it is incomplete. Shelby Hill tried to come back, and it was broken up by the man, Chris Hall, who moments ago had taken a deflected pass into the end zone. Oh, that East was... Carolina has 56 seconds to kill before they come away with a big upset. That was a very difficult play, right? Look at the, the pressure from the outside. Is it Kumanai again? Yeah, and That's Carter. Carter. Carter there and Kumanai next, and then they just... He saw out of the corner of his eye, he saw Hill, but uh, not able to put anything on it. And East Carolina with 56 seconds to go. En route to a 5-1 and one record. And Syracuse looking at their second straight defeat. This was not what the doctor had ordered, was it? Well, you know, if you look back, people had already said, well, before the season, well, they'll, they'll be 4-2 and because they'll lose to Florida and Florida State. Well, they beat Florida and they lost to East Carolina. So I'm not so sure they're in a bad position. Certainly not. You know they could have won this game. They don't appear like they're going to. But... Uh, give East Carolina a lot of credit. They played a, a, an excellent football game. And in that second half, Syracuse really could not pressure Jeff Blake. And His long touchdown scramble with 12 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Putting East Carolina into the lead for keeps. And Blake was just, uh, he did a fantastic job. Receivers caught the balls. He threw them, put him in the right place. They certainly gave Syracuse opportunities. And Blake's going to go down. East Carolina 23, Syracuse 20. Shelby Hill, who tried to make a play, coming back on that last ball. Looked like he played the deflection. Yeah, well, I mean, that was... He was way out of position, had to try to run up and get it. And you see the insert there, the clock. They've got 11, 10 now on the 25-second uh, clock. They'll run one play, and that's it. Obviously, they can't stop the clock, and this should do it. And Bill Lewis gets the Gatorade dunking on the sideline. A big upset for the East Carolina Pirates as they knock off Syracuse here in the carrier dome. So East Carolina defeats Syracuse 23 to 20. Let's go down now to Dan Horton. All right, Dave. The old saying is what a difference a day makes. Well, in Syracuse's case, what a difference two weeks makes. A couple of weeks ago, Syracuse, having knocked off Florida, was ranked 10th in the country. Folks were talking about, hey, if you beat Florida State, you could deserve to be number one. Well, now Syracuse has lost two straight. The injuries are mounting as JoJo Wooden went down today. Dan Conley, obviously, out for the season. Syracuse is in a tough position. The Orange men are going to have to bounce back next week against the Pittsburgh team that was undefeated going into today's game against Notre Dame. And even though the Panthers were losing that game pretty handily at last word, it's still a pretty good Pittsburgh team. Syracuse has gone from having hopes of going to a major bowl now to talking about trying to avoid a third straight loss. All right, Dan. How true. As the fates have really changed on Syracuse, our Pepsi player of the game, by the way, Antonio Johnson, for that touchdown catch. But not much consolation in defeat as East Carolina comes into the Dome, and for the first time ever, they defeat Syracuse 23 to 20. Next week, the Orange Men on the road in Pittsburgh.